It's a rivalry that dates back to the 60s, but only 13 miles separate two of the top programs for athletics in the Mobile County area as we get ready for the 45th meeting between Blunt and LaFleur. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Finnegan alongside my broadcast partner, Howard McCain, in the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. And, Howard, at this point in the season, we know a little bit about the four teams that are going to be up for the playoffs. But tonight, LaFleur and Blunt, not an overlooked matchup as they're getting ready for the seedings as we are underway. Tim, what can you say? <clears throat> you know, and we've seen it several times, as we've continued to broadcast so many of these games, these rivalry games, and, 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 and we know how things get amped up and, and, and players get ramped up to come out here and to, and to pretty much try to knock each other's heads off. And we're not going to see anything short of that tonight from this Anthony Schamberger-led LaFleur squad and this Mark Hurt-led Blunt Leopard football team. Well, the LaFleur Rattlers are going to start off with the ball. They're starting out at the 30-yard line. Rodney English and James Leatherwood, a deadly combination, but English hasn't been healthy this entire season. As we see him back at quarterback, comes out and throws a strike, and it's going to be caught after a tip drill on the play. They're going to get about five. Excuse me, that's going to move them up to the 35-yard line. A minimal gain on the play, but almost could have been an interception. Well, they're, they're coming in late, Tim, and they're waving the uh, action of the catch off, so it's going to be an incomplete pass out into the left flat to the wide receiver, Rodney English, covered up on that play that time, Tim, by uh, Faison Forrest, who um, actually was able to get a, a hand on the football, disrupt the pass just enough where it went off the receiver's hands, fell incomplete. It's now second down and 10. The Rattlers come out in the spread offense. We've seen both electrifying quarterback options, and I say that because James Leatherwood, as a senior, has been able to play a little bit of quarterback and running back this year. Coming into the season, he gave way to Rodney English in order to start at quarterback, and he had to step in at times during the season as Leatherwood picks up a first down on that scramble. It's a deadly combination because you just don't know whether or not he's actually going to throw it or run it. What program doesn't want a dual threat at quarterback? I mean, you see it now on the high school level, and now it's ascended to the uh, the college level, Tim, and on into the pros where now, you know, that pure pocket passer, people are not really looking for that anymore. They want a guy that's going to be able to do like the uh, quarterback for LaFleur just did, able to pick up 12 yards on the edge, moves up, uh, moves the six, Tim, first down LaFleur. Darius Polk in motion over to the left side. English is going to hand off to Leatherwood. He's going to test the right side. He has a blockade of defenders chasing him. And and brought down after they cross midfield for a four-yard gain, bringing up second and six as they cross into Leopard territory. Yeah, brought down on the play by Santorius Wilson, one of our seniors tonight that was honored in the pregame here at Madison Blunt Stadium. And uh, looks like he was able to, uh, uh, English was able to pick him about about six yards on the play tip. Nice gain on the play. Uh, actually able to push the ball over into plus territory now for the LaFleur Rattlers. Ball sits on the 47-yard line of the uh, of the Blunt Leopards team. Second down and about three. They're staying consistent with a three-receiver spread to the right side. They've been using a lot of motion early as they have another receiver going to balance out. English is going to keep it himself and go straight up the middle. Gets close to that first down marker, but might be just a bit short. Yeah, ran right into the teeth of that uh, Leopard defense as we uh, continue to get serenaded here early on in the football game by the by the Blunt Leopard band. Now listen, get ready because they're not going to get cheated tonight. Every song that is in their portfolio, it is going to be played tonight in the stadium on homecoming. Yeah, they will call it for a third and short upcoming now. Probably looking for a similar play, just a quarterback right up the middle on this one. English and, and Leatherwood in the backfield. Quick snap, Leatherwood's going to take it himself, get that minimal gain on the play, but just enough to get that fresh set of downs. Yeah, you're right, just enough. And, you know, I've never been a fan of if you only have one yard to go, why would you start back seven yards just to run forward to get one? Trickery, disguise. I, well, and, and as we just get the, uh, the indication for the first down there by our referee tonight is Tim Portis. And uh, LaFleur continues this drive. And look, so far early on in this first quarter, this is exactly what LaFleur needs to do, Tim. They need to have a ball control offense because we know what the Blunt Leopards can do with Demetrius Vaughn out of the backfield when they get the football. They can easily go one play into the end zone. So it's important for LaFleur to neutralize Blunt's quick straight offense by not even letting it on the field. 
both of these coaches were teammates in college, and for the past two seasons have both made both of these programs perennial playoff contenders, but two different ends of the spectrum as a huge pass completion on the plate to D'Angelo Stewart. Rodney English completing the pass down to about the 20-yard line and another fresh set of downs for the Rattler offense. And that was a good job right there by his wide receiver, Eric Jackson, who did a great job of working back towards his quarterback, Tim, when he got flush out of the pocket. As we take a look here, we're not, well, we're not gonna look at the replay, but he got flush out of the pocket, Tim, but he just simply worked his way back to his quarterback, find us, found a soft spot in the zone, sat down, and waited on the ball first down. Polk in motion once again. D'Angelo Stewart, number 18 at the bottom of your screen, has been one of the top targets for the Rattlers offense, and he's just continued to get better every game as we see James Leatherwood testing the middle and gets a great gain of close to six yards on the play. Yeah, and he had to be extremely creative once he got in between the tackles. Tim, just not a lot of running room in between the guard and the tackle on the left side that time for the LaFleur Rattlers, but an even better job by Leatherwood to just stick his head in there. Tim, he was able to pick up about seven yards on first down, so that's a very big uh, big gain there. Ball now on the 16-yard line of the Blunt Leopards. We're still scoreless here in the first quarter. The Leopards come out in a 3-4 defense. The strength of their team has got to be the secondary. A lot of senior leaders in there as they come up with a sack in the backfield, but a flag came out just before the tackle back at the 25-yard line. Yeah, tracking him down in the backfield and bringing him down was Cedric Allen coming in from that defensive end position to uh, finish off the quarterback, Rodney English, but there was a flag on the play. And this flag, I believe, is going to be against the floor. I think it's going to be holding. But what we'll do is we'll wait and see what Tim Portis has to say about that as the ball is now being moved all the way back, Tim, to the 33-yard line. And the call is holding against the LaFleur Rattlers. So, Tim, that now moves the ball all the way back to the 33-yard line of the Rattlers. It's going to bring up second down and about, looks like about maybe 20, 21 yards. Eight minutes and ten seconds remaining here in the first quarter. We're still scoreless. Well, they shifted around some of the personnel. They mix it up. The linebackers and defensive ends for the Leopards' defense are so versatile that they can play both positions, so they shift a lot on the defensive schemes as English is getting chased into the backfield and just throws this one away. A flag comes out. Even though he was out of the pocket, intentional grounding, there was no receiver in the area at the time. Yeah, I think that's going to be intentional grounding against the quarterback that time. Rodney English, and uh, and that's the call. As we watch here, Tim, Rodney English is getting flushed out of the pocket. Now, when they call that play, when LaFleur calls that play and he tries to throw the ball out of bounds, I don't think it made it all the way back to the line of scrimmage. It looked like it from our angle that it made it to the line of scrimmage, but it did not. So that's going to be a 15-yard penalty against the uh, LaFleur Rattlers. That's going to be a loss of down. It's going to go from second down now to third down. Tensional grounding. White team quarterback. The five-yard penalty, lost it down, third down. I apologize, Tim. I said it was a 15-yard penalty. It was actually a five-yard penalty. So now that pushes the ball back. It had to be, okay, it was a spot foul. So it was five yards from where he threw it out of bounds. So now the ball is back at the 36, I'm sorry, the 46-yard line of the floor. Third down and forever here coming up. English spreads out as a receiver, a botched snap in the backfield. James Leather was trying to make something happen. He gets out of trouble to the left side, but tackled for a huge loss in the backfield, all the way back in the blunt, excuse me, into LaFleur territory, and that's going to bring up a fourth and long. And actually, James Leatherwood had an opportunity, Tim. He was able to actually pick the ball up after the uh, miscue on the snap. He could have actually picked it up and threw it out of bounds as long as the ball would have made it back to the line of scrimmage. He was outside the tackle box. There was no reason why he couldn't have thrown it out of bounds and saved those yards for his team, but instead it's going to bring up fourth down, like you said, it forever, and it's going to be a punt situation now for the LaFleur Rattlers. 7.09 remaining here in the first quarter. Howard, there was a reason why he couldn't get rid of it, and his name is D'Angelo Anderson. 6'3", <laughs> 205, junior linebacker right in your face. Come on now. A low snap, and D'Angelo Stewart for LaFleur just gets it away. A high bounce is going to give the Leopards great field position at about the 36-yard line. Now, as these teams send their offensive and defensive units onto the field, Tim, 
when you think about what LaFleur needs to do on defense, LaFleur needs to absolutely sell out. They need to sell out and stop the run because you know Demetrius Vaughn, as we take a look here, just not a whole lot on the punt. He was, D'Angelo Stewart was under huge duress and was able, luckily, just to get something out of that punt. But LaFleur is absolutely going to have to crowd the line of scrimmage, put eight, nine, maybe even ten guys in the, in the box, Tim, and sell out to stop Demetrius Vaughn. Well, Demetrius Vaughn normally plays running back, but he's at the bottom of your screen, lined up at receiver. At this point, it's Kadarius Tony, the sophomore quarterback, comes out, has an end around, hands off to his receiver, but going to be stopped in the backfield for a short loss on the play. Second and about 12 upcoming for the Leopards. Yeah, and that's a good job by the uh, LaFleur defense on first down. They did exactly what we just talked about. They loaded the tackle box with at least nine guys up close to the line of scrimmage. They have already made up their mind that they're going to try to sell out and try to stop this run. Now, it looks like they're running like about a – Maybe even a 4-5 defense right now, Tim, because I see four down linemen, and I'm seeing at least, what, three, maybe three, maybe four linebackers. And there's Tony comes out, empty backfield, a quick strike out to the right side and over through the hands of Demetrius Vaughn. That's going to bring up a quick third and 12. Now, out there in coverage in the flat for LaFleur was Jalen Gray. Jalen Gray, as the corner that's covering Demetrius Vaughn, when they throw that ball out into the flat, he's got a break on Demetrius Vaughn right away. He can't wait for Demetrius Vaughn to catch the ball, turn, and then for him to make the tackle. He's got to converge on him right away and get Demetrius Vaughn down to the ground as quickly as possible because we know this kid can break a few tackles and he can take it to the house easily. Well, what we've learned about the Rattlers this season is they have always been a stronger team in the second half, a slow start, so they need a fast one as they get a quick fourth down after that misfire on the play. It brings up an incompletion, too tall for his intended receiver, but the size of some of these Rattler cornerbacks could be a reason for it. Eric Jackson, 6'4", playing wow. defensive back. Gregory Williams was the intended receiver on that uh, on that pass play, and LaFleur got exactly what they needed out of their defense on the first series by the Blunt Leopard offense. Three plays, negative two yards, and fourth down coming with a punt on the way. Low snap. Blunt is going to kick it straight up in the air. As it's going to take a LaFleur bounce and out of bounds right back at the 32-yard line. Talk about great field position for Coach Amber. Tim, that, that punt was a negative, was a net negative two yards. A negative two yards net on that punt. And it gives the LaFleur Rattlers, again, great field position. You saw them string together some plays to get themselves into plus territory early in the uh, first quarter. Penalties and miscues move the ball all the way back to around midfield. So can LaFleur put together enough plays, Tim, to take advantage of this opportunity at the 34-yard line of the Blunt Leopards and put this thing in the end zone? Well, if they continue with their season-long theme of being a better second-half team, starting off, if they can build some momentum here in the first half, it'll be even more dangerous as the game progresses. As Leatherwood gets is up the middle and just a pile on a leap of leopard defenders just gets all over. <laughs> yeah, that's what a whole <laughs> that's what a whole group of leopards is called, brother. It's called the leap of leopards. He absolutely right ran right into the den of those leopards. Not a lot there. Uh, ended up running actually a little bit more east and west than north and south on that play. But uh, good job of ball security as he was being tackled by James Leatherwood. Picked up Tim. Actually, he lost two yards on that play. No, he picked up two yards. I'm sorry. He picked up two yards on that play. He's going to make it second and eight. Five minutes, 13 seconds. Counting here in the first quarter. Rodney English comes down, drops back, looks over across the middle, checks out to the right side, and is brought down right at the line of scrimmage. It is going to be about third and nine upcoming on the next play. These linebackers for Maddie T. Blunt are playing great football so far. Uh, D'Angelo Anderson and Denard, I think that's Denardio Madison just doing a great job of just staying at home, watching the quarterback. Once he gets out of the pocket, they react, bring him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, Tim. Third down and eight now for the LaFleur Rattlers here in the first quarter. I think he likes to go by D'Lo Anderson. Oh, it's D'Lo. Okay. D'Lo, D'Lo. I met him earlier. English comes out. It's going to test the left side. Trying to find the hole, but being chased by a bunch of defenders and brought out of bounds. A minimal gain of anything on the play brings up a quick fourth 
down for the Rattler offense. Wasn't able to do a lot on that drive. Wasn't able to do anything, Tim. That's three plays. They only picked up a total of one yard on this drive. So now they're too far away for a field goal attempt. And usually LaFleur doesn't employ a, 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 a kid with a big leg when it comes to kicking field goals as we have a timeout taken here at Manatee, at Manatee Blunt High School. LaFleur will take a timeout and so will we with four minutes remaining in the first quarter. You're watching the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. Of Howard. Only 13 miles separates these two great programs, and this rivalry doesn't just stop with football. Basketball is also yeah. a huge part of this rivalry. Yeah, you know, and, and, and year in and year out for several years, you know, LaFleur has been on the national map when it comes to basketball, and here recently in the recent years, Blunt has had a resurgence in their basketball program, so absolutely, when both of these teams take the court, there is something to be won when these guys take the court with each other. Fourth and nine with four minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Ronnie English, James Litherwood in the backfield. English drops back to pass, rolls out to the right side, being chased by defenders, launches across the middle, he gets a completion. A huge completion for the Rattler offense from Rodney English to D'Angelo Stewart. Another big completion for the senior duo. And that's big because I, I actually thought that the play was going to be over as we take a look at the replay. You see the quarterback get flushed up into the pocket, Rodney English, but he does a wonderful job of keeping his eyes downfield the, the entire time. Found his best receiver on offense, D'Angelo Williams in the middle of the field for a first down there inside the 10-yard line. Butterwood gets the handoff and Ben immediately on the play, brought down by the one defensive front making a stop. Yeah, Kalon Wright came up and uh, filled the gap that time. Great job. Right around the uh, line of scrimmage, no gain on the play. So it's going to bring up second down and 11 now for the LaFleur Rattlers. Now, LaFleur can still pick up a first down without scoring, Tim. They have to get down to the one-yard line. But uh, right now, it is uh, second and 10 here in the first quarter. Three minutes and 12 seconds remaining. Leatherwood in motion, spreading out to receiver on the right side, empty backfield for English. He's going to run right up the middle, met by a swarm of defenders and brought down after roughly a three to four yard gain on the play. He's going to bring up third down. Blunt is doing a, a very good job on defense here with, it, with their backs pretty much up against their own goal line. Rodney English trying to make something happen to him as the play broke down. I actually think that was a design quarterback run on that last play as we are going to get a second timeout taken by LaFleur here in the first quarter. They're trying to capture momentum. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in the first quarter, but LaFleur seizing the opportunity right here. They know they have good field position. You don't want to burn too many timeouts too soon, but in this type of opportunity, they're trying to build momentum because, like we said, they're a stronger team in the second half, and they know how dangerous Demetrius Vaughn and that Leopard offense can be. And they also need to be thinking about the fact that, again, LaFleur doesn't usually have a very good kicker on their football team. With you being in this close, Tim, you got to go ahead and say that this is more than likely four down territory Absolutely. for the LaFleur Rattlers, okay? If they don't pick it up on third down, what they should be talking to these kids are, look, we're going to go for it on fourth down. At least try to pick up half of what it is we need to go to get to the uh, first down mark or into the end zone. So if we can't get it all on third down, pick up what you can. We'll try to pick the rest up on fourth down. If we don't, we got the offense for, for, for the Blunt Leopards pinned in deep in their own territory. As we have some scores coming in, last night in action, Davidson defeating Bryan 28 to 18. Baker out to a 7 to nothing lead over MGM in first quarter action for the Battle of West Mobile. Biger with a 7 to nothing lead over St. Paul's early on. Another big rivalry matchup tonight. And in college football, South Alabama out to a 10 to nothing lead over Troy over at Lad People Stadium tonight. I want to say that uh, USA is like a two touchdown favorite in that football game tonight, too. 
Do you have the spread on this game? Uh, no, I don't. It's going to be high score. <laughs> Rodney English on a, play, on a quarterback keeper brought down immediately, and that's a quick fourth down. And right now, Anthony Schamberger has to be thinking after he took that timeout, he yeah. got to look at all these different scenarios. And right now, four down territory. D'Angelo Stewart normally does the kicking and the punting for sure. the team, but at this point, we have seen them go for it on opportunities like this. Now, they're wasting a lot of time here trying to figure out what they're going to do, as, as I, I think. I thought, Tim, they, they may try to go for a field goal, but I think they're going to try to go for this on fourth down. Now, it looks like I, uh, I looked at it wrong a second ago, Tim. Uh, they weren't going to be able to pick up a first down. It was either going to be end zone or bust for the LaFleur Rattlers, but they are going to line up and go for it here on fourth down. Marcus Sullivan joins in the backfield at running back. English takes it, rolls out to his right side, checks back over to his left, lobs it up in the air, and overthrows his re intended receiver. And that's going to be a turnover on downs, and Blunt is going to take over at the 10-yard line. Wow, man, if, if he actually would have had an opportunity to settle down and deliver the ball cleanly into the end zone as we take a look here, Rodney English has time to throw. If he actually throws that ball back to his left, his his uh, wide receiver could have cut off his route and, and faded to the left side of the uh, end zone and may have been able to get in for a uh, touchdown. But Rodney English was under a little bit of duress, threw the ball too high to his wide receiver. So now ball goes over on downs to the, uh, the uh, Blunt Leopards. They're backed up now to their own nine-yard line. One minute, 45 seconds remaining here in the first quarter as Tony comes out with Demetrius Vaughn in the backfield. They're going to hand it off to their star Running back who's going to test the left side, breaks through a couple of tackles, and gets close to that first down marker. He's a big play waiting to happen. You know, every time you watch him, he's just a big play waiting to happen. If, and if LaFleur is not careful, this kid can take the ball to the house on this very next handoff. So they're going to have to, Tim, crowd the line of scrimmage and try to stop the run. Keeping up with the World Series, the Royals out on top of the Giants in the first inning in tonight's action. Both teams with a win apiece and game three trying to get some lead way in that series. That's another handoff is going to go nowhere this time. A little bit of a scuffle downfield. The referee's trying to get in it. Oh, breaking that one up. That was a little <laughs> shoulder bump he gave the defense back for LaFleur. <laughs> Hey man, I'm here. Yeah, he must be, he must be a former linebacker or something. I'm not I'm not sure, but uh, that, that, that was a little. That was a little, <laughs> that was a little how you doing? Let me that check was it. a little Let aggressive. That quick. was a little aggressive. No gain on first down. Tim is going to be bring up second down and long now for the Blunt Leopards as we tick down under a minute now in the first quarter. Tony comes out, hands off to Vaughn, going to test the right side this time. Gets away from one defender, breaks through another, and brought down after about a five-yard gain on the play. He's going to bring up a third and about five. We've got some action on the opposite side of the field. Yeah, we've got a late flag that came in. Now, it was towards the end of the play, and usually when it comes in towards the end of the play, it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be some type of a face mask penalty or it's going to be a personal foul penalty as we get the call here. I'm sorry, it's actually going to be a hold. I was wrong. Was it a hold or a block in the back? I think it may have been a block in the back against the uh, offense. So, Tim, that's going to nullify that run by Demetrius Vaughn, and they're going to mark it off uh, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So that moves the ball all the way back now to the 20, 20, and a, 20 and a half yard line now of the Blunt Leopards as we continue to tick down to, a, to the close of this first quarter. It's a 10 yard penalty, going to replay second down. Well, at least they get the down back, but yeah. they lose 10 yards sure. on the play. But hey, we knew the intensity was going to tick up a little bit, especially after these opening drives, trying to set a momentum early on in this game, but it's a rivalry for a reason. As a huge stop in the That's backfield, a fumble. a fumble on the play, and LaFleur comes up with a huge fumble recovery. Wow. Boy, that that was quick. The defensive end was able to get in into the backfield, Tim, and hit the running back. I mean, just as he was receiving the football on the handoff from the uh, quarterback as we take a look here. Look at that. Look at that hit. That is, a, shot. that is a big hit. I believe that was De DeAndre Hogues, whose name we haven't called all night long. 
Huge hit that time in on the running back on that play. I believe that was Joshua Brown who was in for D'Angelo, I'm sorry, who was in for Demetric Vaughn on that carry. Ball hits the ground. LaFleur covers it up at their own 20-yard line. And yet again, here LaFleur is, Tim. Great field position right on the edge of the uh, of, of the red zone of the Blunt Leopards. English takes the snap, drops back, has pressure in his face, throws it across the middle, and a completion gets him down inside the five-yard line. Wow. Not a great route ran by both wide receivers for the, uh, the uh, LaFleur Rattlers. Two guys were in the vicinity of the football, but... One guy came down with the football. The important guy, actually, was uh, Orlando Doss Jr. Ball inside the five-yard line of the Blunt Leopards. LaFleur knocking on the door again. But can they get it in? Leatherwood and English in the backfield. First and goal from about the four-yard line. A check down to Leatherwood. He's going to try to get out to the left side. Brought down from behind for a loss on the play. Second and goal is going to be upcoming from about the eight-yard line. Cedric Allen coming in and making a stop in the backfield. Yeah, that's huge because we've seen him do that already a couple of times tonight, Tim, where he's been able to track down the ball carrier for behind as I believe we get a timeout taken here, or I take it back, we're at the end of the first quarter. You're watching the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week, second quarter action for Leopards and Rattlers coming your way next. your child eat at school today? Well, if you're looking for answers, we have them right here. I'm Suzanne Yates, the Food Service Director for the Mobile County Public School System, and I would like to invite you to join me for Cooking with Class, the child nutrition show from the Mobile County Public School System. Come with me as I go into the school cafeterias and talk to the folks who prepare the meals daily for our children. Join me as we go Cooking with Class. Welcome back to the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week presented by School Insights live here on Seymour TV. Tim Finnegan, Howard McCain bringing you tonight's rivalry matchup between the Blunt Leopards and the LaFleur Rattlers as LaFleur second and goal from about the eight yard line and in the Leopard Red Zone. So far, Tim, this is the type of football game that LaFleur wanted to have coming out against this Blunt Leopard football team. Both the receiver coming in motion to the left side. English taking the snap. He's going to test the left side, goes straight up the middle, and brought down close to that second yard marker third and goal inside the five yard line in the back where they were yeah and that was a good job there by rodney english of just simply staying in behind the block being given by james leatherwood his lead his lead block they're trying to hurry up and get back to the line of scrimmage and run the next play tim third down and goal now for the lafleur rattlers again for the full the floor this is four down territory they're not going for a field goal Leatherwood and English line up in the shotgun formation. English is going to take it, gets a block, and gets into the end zone and on the board. Rodney English with a three-yard scramble right up the middle gets the Rattlers on the board first. And you can only play with fire so long before you finally get burned if you're the Blunt Leopards. For the entire first quarter, as we take a look here, very little resistance put up by this Blunt Leopard defense as the quarterback, Rodney English, scampers into the end zone for a three-yard touchdown run, Tim. And again, you can't continue to spot a team great field position three times in a row and they not take advantage of it. English lines up and he's going to hand off to Leatherwood. He's going to test the left side, runs right through defenders and into the wow. end zone for the two-point conversion. Nice. And the Rattlers increase their lead eight to nothing with 11 minutes and 22 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. You're watching the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. It started for me when I went into the first grade and then I went on to George Hall Elementary School and from there to Williamson where I graduated. The public school system, it had a great impact on me because not only did it prepare me academically for my future career, but it also prepared me for life. 
because of its diversity of, of students and teachers, it really gave me a well-rounded education. Welcome back to the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week presented by School Insights live here on Seymour TV, a production of the Mobile County Public School System. 11 minutes, 22 seconds remaining here in second quarter action, and the Rattlers strike first after a three-yard scramble by senior quarterback Rodney English and then followed up with a two-point conversion by his counterpart. James Leatherwood at running back. The seniors doing a lot of work tonight. Yeah, and again, like I said before we went to break, Tim, as we await the uh, kickoff here after the touchdown, you can't spot a team great field position that many times and they not eventually take advantage of it. Angela Stewart kicking off from the 48-yard line gets a great kick back to the 10 of Blunt as they bring it out. It looks like it's going to be a reverse oh boy. end around on the 20, 25, 30. 35 brought up to the 40-yard line and upended but the Leopards will get great field position trying to answer back from this momentum that the Rattlers have built. It looked like something big might have been cooking there, Tim. I thought it was. I thought he might have been off to the races. Ball but security. Ball yeah. security. <laughs> as we take a look here at the replay as the ball comes down to the kickoff returner. Now he flips it just, I believe that was uh, Gregory James who takes it around the left uh, around the left side and gets upended. Big hit there that time by the big wide receiver from LaFleur. I believe that was D'Angelo. I believe that was D'Angelo Stewart making that stop, Tim. Ball sits at the 40-yard line of the Leopards. They trail 8 to nothing here in the second quarter. Tony comes out, hands off to Vaughn, who's going to stiff arm a defender and has pressure in the backfield and brought down immediately, but a flag comes out at the 43-yard line. Now, I'm not sure what that is. That could be holding against the offense, and if so, if it is, you take that penalty. Do not take that play. You take that penalty. That would move them back 10 yards, but we'll get the final indication here from the referee, Tim Portis. Now, I saw him make an initial point in the other direction as if it might have been against LaFleur, but we'll get the call here. DeAndre Ray, the senior linebacker for the Rattlers, leading the charge. It looks like it will be a blunt penalty back in the month. Yeah, if you're the coaching staff for the LaFleur Rattlers, you don't take that play, which was a loss on the play, but you take the 10-yard penalty. On the blue team, it's a 10-yard from the end of the run. We're going to replay first down. Blunt, blunt change. team. Yeah, Blunt changed their colors. That? Just for homecoming, Blunt changed from purple to blue tonight. Apparently. <laughs> Can we get a double check? <laughs> a discount double check? Probably not a discount. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tony and Vaughn lined up in the shotgun formation. Two receiving options out to the left side, and they have their tight end going across the middle as Tony's looking for him. Overthrows and almost intercepted, and a flag comes out in the secondary. Wow, that was an extremely late flag. Tim, could there be maybe be pass interference or holding? In the defensive secondary for the LaFleur Rattlers, that was an extremely late flag. The intended receiver on that play was Charles Shepard for the Blunt Leopards. Ball was grossly overthrown there by the quarterback, but a flag came out. So was his progress downfield impeded? If so, that's going to be a, a penalty against LaFleur, and that's exactly what it is, holding against the defense. Well, it looked like Terrence Massey, the junior receiver for the Leopards, got a little tied up in double Play. coverage. We have defensive holding on the white team. Ten-yard penalty remains first down. Okay, now they didn't change their team colors. Back and forth, back and forth. They don't. They didn't wear the uh, your favorite orange. Yeah, they tonight. didn't. Well, yeah, they're, they're they're the away team, and I kind of hate that. I love their home uniform. They got the orange high socks yeah. just for you. And they also some some of the guys are also wearing the pink tape tonight. There you go. You know how I feel about pink, right? Spreading the love around. That's right. It's the new black. 10 minutes, 41 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Blunt trying to answer LaFleur's 8 to nothing lead here in second quarter action as Demetrius Vaughn gets another carry and met immediately at the line of scrimmage. A minimal gain on the play is going to bring up a second and about 13. This, de this defensive front has been exceptional here so far, Tim, in this first half. Baker out to a 14 to nothing lead over MGM in first quarter action. Take a look at other scores around the Mobile area. Fairhope leading Murphy 7-6 in first quarter action. A 7A Region 1 battle across the Bay. Viger and St. Paul's tied at 7 apiece in 5A Region 1 action. As we sit at 8 to nothing here with 10 minutes and counting in our first half between LaFleur and Blunt. Tony comes out, hands off to Vaughn. He's going to try the middle this time and goes nowhere quickly. Third down and 10 from the 40-yard line. It's obvious what LaFleur has worked on 
in practice this week. Pick up about maybe three yards, Tim, close to four on that second down. It's going to bring up third down at about nine now for the Blunt Leopards. But it's obvious that they – I got it. Wait. Stop number five. Stop. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Stop Demetrius Vaughn at all costs. If they beat us through the air, so be it. But Vaughn is not going to beat us tonight, and they have actually sold out to stop him tonight here on senior night homecoming here at Maddie T. Blunt High School. We did a little floor homecoming game. They, they had a yeah. scare just like this, yeah, I, they be did. I believe, against Williamson. Tony comes out, has pressure in his face, continues to scare away. Flags come out, two flags come out. Tony's scrambling up the right side, trying to get some blocks. Gets past that first down marker, but two flags yeah. in the backfield and one from the sideline over here. It looks like it's going to be against Blunt, and that's going to back him up even more. Yes, yeah, we take a look here. All types of pressure in the quarterback's face, and the defensive lineman, I take that back, that was not defensive lineman. I think that might have been one of the uh, one of the running backs that might have been blocking in the backfield. Just took his guy down to the ground, and then we also had a penalty come in late at the end of the play. But the one that's going to count is going to be the holding, Tim. That's a spot foul. It happened at the 32-yard line of the Blunt Leopards. They're going to move them back 10 yards to their own 22-yard line now. Holding. The blue team, five-yard penalty from the spot. Replay, third down. Now the yard line to go for the first down for Blunt is the 50-yard line. So this is going to be third down and about 28 yards for the Blunt Leopards. What you do here, you run something safe, and you just punt the football. The blue team. I'm still trying to get through that one. The blue team. <laughs> they, do they look blue from here, maybe? I don't know. Purple? We've got HD vision over here up in the booth. <laughs> A quick strike is going to go nowhere, but a loss on the play, fourth and long. They are playing inspired football on defense. Howard. LaFleur. Can you be that surprised? When the suits show up, the players, the players show, show up. up. But still, I am just impressed with the defensive game plan that LaFleur has trotted out here at Blunt High School. Well, they're they, forcing Kadiris Tony to make all the plays. Right. They're shutting down the star player and mm -hmm. Demetrius Vaughn, mm -hmm. which not a lot of people can say that they can do. Sure. And they're forcing Tony, a young sophomore quarterback that's been quite efficient throughout this entire season, to try to make everything happen on his own. A high punt is going to roll out of bounds. No, excuse me, it's going to stay in bounds right at the 49-yard line, but it looks like we do have a flag on the play. Yeah, it came from the far side from the LaFleur sideline thrown by one of the line judges and he's going to talk it over with uh tim portis now will this be coming back and will will um blunt have to do a re kick on this fourth down as the uh the officials continue to discuss what is going on but either way it goes the ball is going to eventually go back over to lafleur who right now have all of the momentum here in this football game, Tim, and they currently lead by a score of eight to nothing with 7.56 here remaining. The officials are still talking it over right around about the 25 yard line, and here comes Tim Portis. So it's a personal foul penalty against the LaFleur Rattlers. So that is going to affect field position big time for the LaFleur Rattlers, who would have started this drive, Tim, right around about the 40-yard line of the Blunt Leopards. But as it goes, the personal foul penalty, which took place right, it's kind of strange because they marked the ball off from the 49-yard line. Now, is that where the ball was fielded? Personal foul, targeting on the receiving team. It's 15-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Now, Tim, if I'm not mistaken, I thought when there's a targeting penalty, I thought that was the yards and the player is ejected from the football game. I didn't hear Tim Portis say that the player from LaFleur was ejected. I did not hear that. Here come the Rattlers. We will have to see who's missing from the lineup, if any, it's never word in English. as the game continues. I have a man in motion. Three receivers out to the left side. English takes the snap. He's going to hand off to Leatherwood. He's going to try the right side, but going to go nowhere. The defensive front of the Leopards comes up with a stop after a minimal gain. It's going to bring up a second and nine now for the Rattler offense. Now, if you're if you're a fan of the LaFleur Rattlers and you have an eight to nothing lead over the Blunt Leopards, you would think, my gosh, if we can score eight points, if we can score another touchdown, we need to try to open up the offense. No, that's not what LaFleur is going to do, Tim. 
they're going to continue to run their offense as methodically as they possibly can because running the football shortens a football game. It eats up a lot of clock. As the play clock just starts now for the LaFleur Rattlers, they're going to keep this football on the ground until they either score or Blunt forces them to put the ball in the air. Seven minutes remaining here in our second quarter action. The strength of this Blunt team, Howard, is in the secondary, so you're not going to see too many as the attacks as they right. just get it off. English is going to try the left side, but has to run out of bounds and might have lost some yards yeah, on the play. Yeah, he did. Timmy lost about a yard and a half on that uh, first down. Now, if you aren't going to – if you have no chance of picking up any additional yardage on that play, if you're LaFleur, don't run out of bounds, okay? Just slide down right there and keep the clock going as we tick down now to 6.56 remaining in the second quarter. I know there's a whole second half of football to play, Tim. I understand that. It's going fast, though. But, again, one of the – Again, part of your offensive game plan or your defensive game plan against Blunt's offense is to not let him get on the field. You do that by playing ball control offense and keeping the clock moving. English comes out third and 11 now. Three receiving options to his left. Empty backfield, throws it long, and gets an incompletion right off the hands of James Leatherwood. Would have been a first down, but dropped pass at the 45-yard line is going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, and that would have been a big play as we take a look here. Ball was thrown a little high. I'll give him that to James Leatherwood. Howard, if it hits hit the fingers, you got to catch it. I understand. But James Leatherwood is a running back. He's not a wide receiver. Now, He's most, an athlete. But most people believe <laughs> that when the ball hits a receiver in the hands, he is supposed to catch it. Now, he's a there running back. Yeah, I've got a supporter over here. No, he's, a, no, he's supporting me. <laughs> He's a running back. He was out in the flat. Ball was thrown a little high. He wasn't able to secure it. So now it's going to bring up fourth down in a punting situation now for the LaFleur Rattlers as there's a little bit of confusion with personnel. Play clock continues to tick down, Tim. It's now at 12 seconds. I'm just saying, if it hits the fingers, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Let's move on. Coach him up. 6.50 remaining. D'Angelo Stewart comes out and gets this one just away. And it's going to stop out of bounds around the 46-yard line. Blunt still with good field position, and it looks like we might have some players down and a flag down in the backfield all the way down to the 25-yard line. Now, I believe that is – now, was that Terrence Massey? I believe that's Terrence Massey that's down for the Blunt Leopards, and I believe this is going to be roughing the punter against the Blunt Leopards. As we take a look here, yeah, clearly he, he he ran into the punter. Now, if he was blocked into the punter, that's different. But he clearly he ran into the punter and man. also hurt himself. Um, it looks like he might have taken a shot from behind, actually. He wasn't okay. the player that actually made the hit on the punter, but it looks like he got hit from behind on the play. Yeah, it looks like he's favoring that right knee as he's being helped off the uh, field by the uh, training staff. But uh, they'll get him over here to the sidelines, Tim, and take a look at him. But... Uh, that roughly the the uh, punter penalty actually is a personal foul penalty. So, Tim, that gives the ball back to the LaFleur Rattlers. New life for this offense at, at the midfield stripe now, Tim. They still lead by a score of 8 to nothing, 641 remaining here in the second quarter as the uh, LaFleur Rattlers come right back, off, back out on offense. One timeout remaining. They took two in the first right. quarter. As they have a bunch formation, English coming out, hands off to Leatherwood, trying the right side, has some blockers, gets up the field, and ripped down. After about a four-yard gain on the play, is going to get him up to the 46-yard line. Tim, unless something happens here quickly for the LaFleur, for, for the, uh, the Blunt Leopards to get the ball back, this defense – is going to continue to get more and more tired after each and every snap. Now, it's not a hot night. It's only about 63 degrees tonight, so the weather is not a factor. Perfect football weather. Perfect. So you don't have to worry about these guys getting, you know, getting fatigued from sweating a lot. But, boy, they've been out there for a lot of plays here in this second quarter. English drops back to pass, has pressure from behind, gets the ball down the field. He has an intended receiver. They're going to call – uncatchable on the play. He was in double coverage out on the right side. Yeah, that was just a good job of underneath and over the top coverage by the defensive secondary for the Blunt Leopards. Just was no way the quarterback was going to be able to fit that in to the wide receiver. So the ball goes out of bounds incomplete, Tim. That's going to bring up third down. That incomplete pass for the LaFleur Rattlers stops the clock. If you're LaFleur, you don't want that clock to stop when you have a lead. You want to try to shorten this football game as much as possible. So don't be surprised they come right back here on third down with 
with a run to James Leatherwood. And if you got Rodney English running at you, that's about 6'5", 180 coming at you. <laughs> Third and five for the Rattlers at the 45-yard line. English is going to take it himself, has blockers, gets up the field, a first down yeah. and brought down near the 36-yard line. Fresh set of downs, and Anthony Scherenberger continues to have play yes. possession. And that play has worked to perfection so far in this first quarter because this is the exact same play they scored off of, just a direct snap to the quarterback, and he just gets in behind his running back, James Leatherwood, and rides his coattail as far downfield as he possibly can before he gets tackled. He's tackled in bounds. He picks up the first down. The sticks move, and the clock continues to tick, Tim. Now we're down to 536 remaining in the ball game. So realistically, before LaFleur even thinks of giving the ball back, they can melt another two minutes off this clock. Jacoby Green, the running back in the backfield, is going to get a carry. He's going to test up the left side and back into the middle as he gets a huge gain of about six to seven yards on the play, bringing him up to around the 30-yard line. Teach, oh, I'm sorry, that was, I think that was Vashawn, no, I take it back, it was Adrian Law that uh, made the stop from that, uh, from that defensive line position, Tim, as the clock continues to tick here. LaFleur enjoying an eight to nothing lead, and all of the momentum right now is on LaFleur's sideline in this rivalry game. A quiet sideline for the Blunt Leopards. Second and about six as Green's going to get another carry, go up the middle, gets another first down, still fighting through all the tackles, and finally brought down on the play inside the 25-yard line. It's taken several. It's taking several blunt leopards to bring down these running backs for the LaFleur Rattlers. Right now, the offensive line of LaFleur is pretty much winning the, the, the battle in the trenches right now. They're pushing this defensive line wherever they want to go, opening up rushing lanes for the running backs for LaFleur. Picks up another first down, Tim. Clock continues to tick as we uh, tick down now to about 432 remaining in the second quarter. Fresh set of downs for LaFleur. They shift over Leatherwood now at running back. Green as an extra blocker as they continue out of this bunch package. English is going to take it himself, gets a couple of blocks, evades the defender, and brought down for a minor loss on the play. Now that time, the defense won. All right, that time the defense was able to execute. They were able to shed blocks, get into the backfield, disrupt what the quarterback wanted to do, Tim, as we have a player down on the ground right now. I believe he's for... Um, for the uh, LaFleur, I'm sorry, but for Blunt, as our officials here tonight, Tim Portis is our referee. Uh, I believe that's Earl Adams, Jacob Grissom, Jeff Goff, and Jerry Burns round out our crew tonight as uh, a player is being attended to on the far side by the uh, medical staff for the uh, Blunt Lepers. Tim, I believe the player down is, that is D'Angelo Anderson that's currently down on the turf for the uh, Blunt Leopards. Well, they got the crew out there taking a look at them. Four minutes remaining here in the second quarter. We'll be right back with more coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week live here on Seymour TV, a production of the Mobile County Public School System. Four minutes remaining here in second quarter action as the LaFleur Rattlers are now facing a second and about 13 on the play. English drops back to pass, looks over to the left side, fires it out for his uh -oh. intended target, and D'Angelo Stewart in the end zone for a touchdown. English's second touchdown of the night goes 26 yards to his fellow senior, D'Angelo Stewart. And Tim, it was a thing of beauty. As we look at the replay, watch how comfortable the quarterback Rodney English is in the pocket and delivers a perfect strike to his wide receiver, to his big wide receiver, D'Angelo Stewart in the back of the end zone. He had beaten the defense. He was about six or seven yards deep in the uh, back of the end zone. 
ball came down to him perfectly as LaFour lines up here for a two-point conversion. It's going to be a handoff to Leatherwood that's going to get up the left side and into the end zone. His second two-point conversion of the night gives the Rattlers a 16-0 lead with three minutes and 45 seconds remaining here in our first half. Rodney English, his second touchdown of the night, and what a perfect strike across the middle to D'Angelo Stewart as we take a look again right here. English, all kinds of time in the backfield as he just lobs it up there for his big target. It looked like he had double coverage on him, but 6'4", 200 pounds of D'Angelo Stewart just showing why he's, one of, he's been one of the top weapons for the Rattlers right. this, off, this season. Yeah, and, 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 and as a wide receiver, especially a big one, Tim, as a quarterback, you just want to give your wide receiver an opportunity to make a play. Every single defensive back for the Blunt Leopards that's going to be defending this guy, he's going to, he's going to be at least two or three inches taller than these guys. So get the ball up and give him an opportunity to catch the ball at his highest point and see what he can do. That time, he just used good route running, a good speed, to create enough separation between him and the defense to get into the back of the end zone. Ball was thrown perfectly by Rodney English. Next thing you know, 26 yards later, they're in for another score. Stewart comes out, and now he's going to be kicking this one off. The Rattlers are down there already. They got all kinds of momentum here. Stewart just boots this one away, and right it's going to go out of bounds. Demetrius Vaughn just took a look at it right there. Three minutes, 45 seconds. <laughs> I'll, I'll never understand it, Tim. The football field is 52 yards across, okay? Uh -huh. You mean to tell me you can't keep a football inside of a field that's 52 yards across? Can you do a kickoff? Well, probably better. Hold on, yeah. answer my question now. Yes, I can. You can do a better yes, kickoff? Yes, I can. That might have to be a video. Yes, we I can. We might have to do a video. I of that. sure and will. I'll, send, I'll, send, I'll get D'Angelo, and you two can have a little uh, right. kickoff Kick competition. Contest. All right, call me. Kicking with Howard. Call me. <laughs> all, the, all, all these people that you call out. I want to call see some of your highlight tapes back in the day. Let's see some of your highlight tapes. They uh, consisted of me playing a lot of saxophone in the band. Okay. <laughs> You're more of a mathlete. <laughs> Intramural champion. That's right. Intramural champion. <laughs> Fantasy football champion. I'll take that. Yes, I'll take that. yes, yes. The Leopards start off at the 35-yard line. Tony's going to test his receivers. Out on the right side and an incompletion, but a flag comes out of the play. Yeah. Might be a little bit of pass interference. Could help out the Leopard offense. Yeah, back on coverage was Randy Wiggins. Now, he was actually stride for stride with Antonio Wright on the right side. But as the ball came down to the wide receiver, he did bump him, but he never did turn and make a play on the football. If Gotta he be looking at the ball. If he would have turned and made a play on the football, that would have just been great defensive coverage and no flag would have hit the turf. But as it goes, it's going to be pass interference against LaFleur. Easy call by the officials. And uh, Tim Portis is going to let us know just in just a second, Tim, exactly what we just said. On the play, defensive, pass interference, the 15-yard penalty, first down. So we take a look right here. Tony has all sorts of time, able to look down the field. He was looking for his intended target, but as the ball is in the air, we talked about you have to be looking for yeah. the ball, and right there, the defensive back for LaFleur not doing that, breaking up the play, and that's going to cause the penalty. A quick strike here on fresh set of downs out to the 50-yard line, and down quickly. It's going to bring up second down. Yeah, that's just good defense, Tim, out there in the uh, right flat by the, uh, by the defensive back for LaFleur. Now, there was only about a three-yard game pass was actually thrown out of flat to Deontay Purdue, made the catch, able to get upfield for about three, Tim. Ball now on the 47-yard line of LaFleur. LaFleur up 16 to nothing, 3.08 left in the first quarter. Charles Shepard, the tight end, shifting over as an extra blocker. Now he shifts out at receiver, lobs it up there, single coverage on the outside. A little bit of a push at the end of it. No flags on the play as it was an overthrow. Now that time, the corner, Randy Wiggins, did turn around and made a play on the football. So we got some more scores from the Mobile area coming in. Baker with a 21 to nothing lead over MGM in first quarter action. Fairhope, 14 to 12 over Murphy in the first quarter. And college football action, South Alabama with a 10 to three lead over Troy in the second quarter. 
as we sit now 16 to nothing with two minutes, 53 seconds remaining here in second quarter action. Blunt trying to get some momentum here in this game late in the first half. As a delayed handoff to Demetrius Vaughn, he battles up the middle on third down. It's going to be fourth and inches near the 40-yard line. you got to think that Mark Hurd's going to go for it. Wow, Tim, I'm looking at where they're spotting this football, and I know fourth and inches sounds very, very generous, but if you look at that, that, that marker and the down-to-go marker, that looks like that's about two yards. So she kept that the ball boy looked like he was trying to move the ball up a little bit. You eh? think so? Hey, hey, you know that's that's how they coach him up. That's how <laughs> that's, they coach him up. Home, it's called he home. got a, he got an attaboy when he went to the sideline. It's line, called home cooking. It's called home cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth and about two, it would look like. Tony comes out, pressure in his face, almost got oh a little bit of a wow. face mask action right there, but brought down in the backfield for a sack. And that is a turnover on downs, and LaFleur takes over with two minutes, eight seconds to work with, a 16-point lead and one timeout. Yeah, Jelani Petway was lined up over the center, and he just beat him. As we look right here, Jelani Petway gets in. Now, he doesn't get credit with the sack, but he does disrupt the offensive flow that the quarterback was trying to get into enough to uh, – hold him up long enough for defensive help to come finish off the sack. So the ball goes over on downs, back to LaFleur. Again, momentum all the way over on the other side of the field with the LaFleur Rattlers. Ball on the 48-yard line of the Rattlers, first and 10. English comes out, two flags, one in each backfield. It looks like we might have a false start. Yeah, let's find out here from, from the referee. Dead and ball, substitution infraction on the blue team. Oh, wow. So that's going to go against the Blunt Leopards, who uh, apparently have changed their jerseys to blue tonight. Uh, right. Just for tonight's game, Tim, only. I've got the counter over here. I think we're up to three. I think we're up to three. <laughs> so I'm going to say the over-under. I'm going to say at least eight. I'm going to go over-under eight. You do know to a certain extent men are colorblind. Speak for yourself. Now, I think, well, well, well I mean, well, you do know we have a problem distinguishing between navies and blacks. Sure, sure. But distinction between navies and purples? I don't know about that. I can't spot you anything on that one. <laughs> A handoff to Leatherwood is going to get the clock rolling again as we tick down one minute, 50 seconds, and counting. Anthony Schamberger, a productive, possessive Whoa. offensive scheme that he's had in the first half tonight. It's actually been an impressive game plan but it's even more so impressive because his football team has come out here and they've executed it, Tim. It's one thing to have the game plan in place, but it's another one to execute it, and LaFleur early on in this first half, actually this entire first half, has done exactly what they wanted to do on offense. Second and about three, English drops back to pass, Rockets is out to the right side, Polk in single coverage, and it looks like it's broken up on the play. And that's going to bring up a third down now for LaFleur. Yeah, it was pretty good defensive coverage that time by uh, Faison Forrest over on the right side. As we take a look here, again, no pressure on the quarterback. It comes late. A lot of air under the football. Anybody's uh, catch there, but uh, nice job of uh, of coverage over there by Faison Forrest, Tim. So that's going to bring up third down and about four. I believe this is going to be a, another run play by the quarterback, Rodney English, with James Leatherwood as his lead block. If they're able to pick up this first down, they can just go ahead and run out the clock and go into the locker room with a 16 to nothing lead. Well, the quarterback keeper's been their bread and butter all night as right now it's going to work again as English gets out of bounds after he picks up a fresh set of downs on the play. If he didn't get it, it depending on the spot, Tim, he might be a little wow. bit short. Fourth and inches on that one. Now, that's, that, that comes down to not having very good field awareness from the quarterback. If he knows he has to pick up four yards, you don't go scampering out of bounds after three or three and a half. But for LaFleur, they're going to try to run out this clock. But here they're going to take a, a, a timeout, Tim, talk it over on fourth down, see can't they pick up this first. One minute, 17 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Howard, you're on social media, huh? All the time. Well, if you want to know what's happening in the Mobile County Public School System, you can follow us on Facebook mm -hmm. and Twitter to get breaking news, announcements, and school news. And if you log on to mcpss.com for up-to-date information, okay. you can get anything that you're possibly looking for. When you see positive news about our school system, share it on your own social media accounts and help us get the word out that good things are happening in the Mobile County Public School System. It here, starts here. with us. Here, 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 here. We've got some more scores coming in. Baker 
And the battle for Westmobile out to a vaunting 28 to nothing lead here in second quarter action. Fairhope now increases their lead 21 to 12 in second quarter action against Murphy. And college football action from Lad Beeble Stadium tonight. South Alabama with a 10 to three lead over Troy. As tomorrow night, we will be featuring BC Rain and Williamson from Ladd, a unique Saturday matchup. Yeah. But interestingly enough, Telestone, in only his second year at the helm of the Red Raiders, has them in position for their first playoff appearance in over nine years. And you and, and for Red Raider and, and for uh, for Red Raider Nation, they have to be excited about that because they've seen some very lean years in BC Rain football here in the past few years. So if they're able to hold on and get themselves to the playoff. Red Raider Nation is just going to be just ecstatic. Well, the floor is ecstatic right now as they pick up a fresh set of downs. In World Series action, we're in the third inning. The Royals holding on to a one to nothing lead over the Giants. Rodney English comes out, fresh set of downs, drops back to pass, looking on the right side, lobs it up for Stewart. And off of his hands on the play. We talked about it. If it hits the fingers, you got to catch it. But he was in double coverage on the play. Care. The big 6-5 uh -huh. frame trying to make something happen. He, he did exactly what he needed to do, Tim. He split the defense as we take a look here. Now watch. As the ball comes down, D'Angelo Stewart puts himself in position. Look, he puts himself in perfect position to make that catch, Tim. He split the defense. The ball hit his hands and his hands only. As a wide receiver, you have to catch that thing at its highest point. When it hits your hands, you got to squeeze it. It. Squeeze it, which do, do this. Look at this. Squeeze it like that. Well, back in your day, didn't they have stick them? What, what are you saying, Tim? I you asked you back in your playing days. <laughs> I don't know when that was, but it wasn't recent. <laughs> Rodney <laughs> was just in the right side as he's got a scammer up the right side. A huge gain for the senior quarterback is going to get him a fresh set of downs on the play. Tim, be glad I like you. <laughs> Listen, great job Just by Rodney bro. English. As we take a look here on the on the replay, pocket breaks down. Timmy finds a rushing lane, gets up, gets up field. He does everything great here, but this is what he doesn't do good. Right there, he goes out of bounds. Don't go out of bounds. It's 22.1 seconds late, uh, left in the second quarter. Just go down, let the clock run out. You go in with a 16 to nothing lead. But looks like the the uh, the offense wants to well, try the clock to continues they... to run as English fires a quick one. And it's going to be a Whoa, touchdown. Whoa, are you serious? I thought it was an interception for a second, but D'Angelo Stewart catches his second touchdown of the first half. Are you serious? We're going to need another look at this. I thought he stepped out of bounds at one point. English lobs it up for his senior receiver, and it is taken away from the defender in the end zone. D'Angelo Stewart, an incredible 16-yard reception for his second touchdown on the night. Rodney English, his third touchdown with five seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Timmy simply took it from Dominique Williams who had an interception. Wide receiver just a little bit stronger. Leatherwood fights his way through, but calling a no good on the two point conversion on the play. Stops the score 22 to nothing with LaFleur. Rodney English, three touchdowns of the night, two passing, both going to D'Angelo Stewart and a rushing touchdown. Tim, I've seen some incredible plays before in my lifetime, but that one right there, I've never seen anything like that where the, de the defense did everything right. They were in position to make an interception, and somehow D'Angelo Stewart was able to reach underneath and pull the football down through his arms and secure it for a 16-yard touchdown from Rodney English as we're about to go into the halftime locker room. Now, Rodney English, again, just trying to get the ball up to his big wide receiver and see if he can make a play. Looks like Williams Dominic had Williams, it. He had the football. He had it. And right there, look. Stewart takes it from his hands. Stewart is on his knees and he's able to pull the football away from Dominic Williams. That is an incredible play. Wow, and LaFleur has stunned everyone in this stadium tonight, including their own fans. They've stunned them tonight as they've raced out to a 22 to nothing lead over the Blunt Leopards. Five seconds remaining here in the first half. They're gonna get Stewart a breather. <laughs> as they bring in the backup <laughs> kicker. 
as this is just a squib kick right up the middle. Blunt immediately falls on it. The clock is going to stop with four seconds remaining here. And there are a lot of adjustments that the Leopards need to make oh in halftime. Yeah, Mark Hurd is not going to be pleased <clears throat> with his football team, excuse me, <clears throat> when they go into the uh, halftime locker room, Tim. Uh, just at this point in the game, you just run something safe, maybe even take a knee and go into the uh, halftime locker room, <clears throat> try to lick your wounds, try to assess and see what it is that we were able to do in the first half that was working and try to build off of that. But they've got to try to solve this puzzle that's the LaFleur Rattler def uh, defense when they come out in the second half. Well, they line up in the pistol formation. Tony's going to come out and hand off to Demetrius Vaughn, who's going to have plenty of room to run in the previous defense and tripped up at the 40-yard line. And that's going to be all she wrote for the first half. And Demetrius, and Demetrius Vaughn, Vaughn is, down. is yeah. down on the field after that tackle on that play. Yeah, that's not good because uh, right there going into the half, he took a helmet right on his knee. So he's being helped to his feet, Tim. So uh, hopefully he will be okay and ready for second half action here at this, uh, in this rivalry game. We'll be back with halftime coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week between the Blunt Leopards and the LaFleur Rattlers. was a very big industry and uh, I went into it in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tim. When Jacob graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, with all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech, start your future today. Halftime coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. Tim Finnegan, Howard McCain, a 22 to nothing lead for the LaFleur Rattlers here at halftime. You couldn't have asked for a better half of football if you're Anthony Schamberger, Absolutely. who's the head coach of the LaFleur Rattlers. This team did everything right, Tim. They played great defense. They played amazing offense. And you have to tip your hat right now to D'Angelo Stewart with that amazing catch in the end zone, Tim, as they got ready to go into the halftime locker room to push that halftime lead now to 22 to nothing over the home on homecoming night, Blunt Leopards. That is a uh, interesting <laughs> halftime speech for homecoming. Yeah, it's down be, twenty-two to nothing. It's not going to be pretty. Now Lafleur, we were talking about earlier in the broadcast that they are a second-half team and they built themselves a nice first-half lead. But with the second-half theme, it's almost as if they were a second-half team this season. A little too late as they're building a lot of great momentum. Rodney English really, this is his first season as a full-time starter at the quarterback. Unfortunately, it is also his senior year, but. He and D'Angelo Stewart, along with James Leatherwood, have continued to just blossom into the athletes that they are showcasing tonight. D'Angelo Stewart, incredible second touchdown came, 16 yards. His first one it was a perfect pass across the middle, a 26-yard strike. Rodney English, three touchdowns to his name tonight, along with a rushing touchdown. Both of his passing going to his senior target, D'Angelo Stewart, and James Leatherwood, two two-point conversions tonight. Right. Everything's working for this offense. Again, Anthony Schamberger can't be any more pleased, Tim. But he has to also go into the locker room at the half and let his team know, look, there's a whole nother half of football left to be played out there. Anything can happen. Just like things went great for us in the first half, things can also go bad for us in the second half if we don't stay focused on our game plan. So it's up to Anthony Schamberger to make sure his team stays even keeled, not get too high thinking that they've won the game because there's a lot of football left to be played, folks, and we'll find out here when these teams come out of the second half uh, locker room. Well, the blue team has got to go back to being the purple team in <laughs> yes, the second half if they want to recover in order to get back into this game with some second half momentum because the Blunt Leopards, they are in playoff contention. The Floor Rattlers, unfortunately, they are out as of right now. But the Blunt Leopards have to build upon tonight's game 
and they have a big matchup to look yeah. forward to next Thursday night against the Sarah Land Spartans. But tonight, they've got to focus on this regional matchup. Even though it's a rivalry game, LaFleur has a lot to play for, and it's called being a spoiler. Yeah, and those last two games were really for both of these teams, Tim. Neither one of them have a cakewalk to the end of the season. Absolutely. They both have to bring it next week and the week after, especially for Blunt. You do not want to go into the playoffs on a sour note. As we take a look at some of the stats, uh, I'm sorry, Sam, some of the stats here, 6A Region 1 standings. Sarah Land atop right now. Spanish Ford getting their first loss of the season last week against Daphne, who sits in third place. And these Blunt Leopards right now in fourth place. Robert still, interestingly enough, right there. Yep. Three and three in the region, making things interesting. LaFleur down at the bottom. So unfortunately, what they've built tonight is not going to help them in any way other than just confidence going forward for sure. the team. But they have a lot of seniors on their team. 6A Region 1 standing. Sarah Land, Spanish Ford, Daphne, Blunt all right there in the mix. Robert's still peeking around, and if Blunt were to drop this game sure. tonight, it was going to make things real interesting and a desperation for next Thursday night's matchup whenever Blunt takes on Sarah Land here on Seymour TV. Yeah, so like we said, Mark Hurt has to rally his troops at the half, Tim, and he's got to bring these guys out here ready to play. And it's going to be a big matchup. You know, if you're Mark Hurt right now and you're sitting there at halftime in the locker room, you got to get your team focused be like, guys, we have to forget about what's happening at the first half. We have to go out and play our ball tonight. They haven't been able to do that because Demetrius Vaughn, hopefully everything's going to be all right. He had a scare at the very end of that last play. Looks like he was able to get off the field under his own power, and hopefully he can be the player that they need him to be and help get back into this game. LaFleur's been all over him tonight. Yeah, and, and you, can, you can see – early on that that was the defensive game plan for LaFleur coming in. From play number one, they loaded the box, Tim, eight, nine, sometimes ten guys up the near the line of scrimmage, and they were playing just one lone safety in the secondary. So that means they were bringing that strong safety down into the tackle box, Tim, and they were just flooding the defensive front with too many guys to block. So that means that Demetrius Vaughn could not find rushing lanes didn't rush for a whole lot of yards in the first half. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have those stats. We'll try to see if maybe we can secure them, but he I, I'd be surprised if he rushed for more than maybe 50 yards in the first half. Came nowhere close to getting into the end zone. So LaFleur sold out on defense and stopped a run. They did that, did enough on offense, Tim, to get themselves 22 points on the board, and right now they're pitching a 22 to nothing shutout of the Blunt Leopards. Well, a lot of pressure's on sophomore quarterback, Kadarius Tony, who's got to make a lot of things happen tonight as we're down on the field for the homecoming festivities for the Blunt Leopards. You got to be impressed with the facilities at Maddie T. Blunt High School. Have you ever been here before? I've been here before, and uh, they do a, a very good job of, of, of definitely of maintaining the uh, playing surface because, you know, for years, Blunt, um, Blunt played their home games at Pritchard Stadium. Really? And, uh, man, I tell you, they, they've done a great job. We'll be back with more halftime coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. LaFleur leading Blunt 22 to nothing at halftime. All right, I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay, so who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. 
go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to halftime coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School football game of the week. The LaFleur Rattlers leading the Blunt Leopards 22 to nothing at halftime as we go down to the field for the homecoming festivities here live on the campus of Maddie T. Blunt High School. We've been talking a lot about signature academies in the Mobile County Public School System and none has been bigger than what's been developing over at BC Rain High School as we have a preview for you about what signature academies are doing and impacting our students. Welcome to BC Rain High School where we believe in preparing students to be college and career ready. Our mission is to provide all students with a rigorous and relevant hands-on educational experience that will foster lifelong learners. We are proud of our academic rigor and real-world connections in which our students are engaged at all levels, including our signature academy of aviation and aerospace. Within our school, we believe it is important for our students to be well-rounded and excel not only academically but socially. Our students practice the essential skills necessary for success within a college atmosphere or a workforce environment. Education is more than information found in textbooks. Education is exploration, experiences, and invaluable opportunities to grow. BC Rain nourishes students within a small learning community, which is a supportive and student-centered learning environment. We offer students the chance to realize their untapped potential. You possess more than you think. I hope you see the opportunities BC Rain has to offer. I look forward to seeing you during your campus visit. Remember, education is the key to your future. For more information on the opportunities BC Rain can offer you, call 251-221-3233. It's here, the MCPSS mobile app. It's a way for you to stay connected and informed with all of the happenings around the school district. Receive weather alerts, check your child's grades and homework, plus more. Watch sports, original programming, find school locations and read the latest news. Stay connected with all your favorite social networking sites. Download it today for free. industry and uh, I went into it in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tim. When Jacob graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, went all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech, start your future today.
It starts with education, the fact that we make a difference in the lives of our students every single day. Our teachers work to unleash the potential inside our students, to seize and help guide them to their dreams, to show them with hard work and dedication they can be what they want to be. It starts with business, providing an innovative product or service to people, providing good jobs for hard workers, and learning to go the extra mile and invest back into the community. When businesses work together, it's a good thing. When businesses work together with the school system, it's a great thing for everyone involved. It starts with a community, the fact that we are all in this together, the fact that we want to leave the world a better place for the next generation. It's a powerful thing when people come together for the common good, for a goal that enriches everyone. It starts when we tie it all together, where businesses mentor students and broaden their worldview, when community provides after-school activities, where volunteers give up their time to help students with sports, science, and weekend projects, where industry engages and trains, where we all embrace technology and help tell the amazing stories all around us. Together, we can raise the quality of life for all Mobilians. Mobile County Public Schools. It starts with us. Halftime coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week live on the campus of Maddie T. Blunt High School. Homecoming festivities happening at halftime, but the Blunt Leopards face a 22 to nothing deficit to the LaFleur Rattlers, as we'll have more action coming your way in the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And frustration, a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy, and giving up impossible. And then we're gonna turn the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. What's your reaction? Yeah, exactly. And unconventional methods. Uh, okay, what else? Common. This is their world. There's nothing. I'm gonna die. Go ahead, go, go, go. I'm a teacher. I make more. Now we can make it better now. Come on, can we do it? We yeah, know that we can. We roll it up. Cause we know how to jump. We we'll roll it out. Roll it out. Cause we know how to skate. We'll cut it down. We'll cut it cause down. We know what yeah. to eat. We'll swap it out. We eat healthy stuff. Can we do it? Yeah, we know that we can. We roll it up. Cause we know how to jump. We we'll roll it out. Roll it out. Cause we know what to eat. We we'll swap it out. We eat healthy stuff. Can we do it? Yeah, we know that we can. Can we do it? Yeah, we know that we can. Yeah, we'll come on. 
Today's a good day to grab your kids and hang out with them for an hour. Dance, walk, play a sport, or cook a healthy meal. Because just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We'll ball it up. Cause we know how to hoop. We'll mess around. Cause we know how to play. We'll drop it down. We'll drop it down. Cause we know how to dance. We'll veg it up. Veg it up. Veggie night and day. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. All in together now. We can make it better now. Search We Can to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day to keep you and your kids healthy. Welcome to halftime coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. The LaFleur Rattlers out to a 22 to nothing lead over the Blunt Leopards right now and Howard. What an incredible matchup we've had in the first half. A possession strategy gets the Leopards a huge lead behind three touchdowns from senior quarterback Rodney English. Yeah, it's just been an amazing performance uh, in the first half by the LaFleur Rat La Rattlers. Like you said, specifically Rodney English, the way he's been able to pretty much, you know, take tr take charge of this offense for the LaFleur Rattlers as we see the festivities, halftime festivities, homecoming festivities uh, begin to wind down here at uh, Blunt High School. But yeah, Rodney English and D'Angelo Stewart pretty much own that first half uh, for LaFleur offensively. Defensively, LaFleur pretty much controlled the line of scrimmage and was not able to allow Blunt to do what they do best. And that's get Demetrius Vaughn out in space, Tim, where he can where he can uh, he can create and he can also churn up yards for his offense. That second touchdown better be on the top ten plays. It was that along was, with our call. That was amazing. <laughs> that was an amazing catch. But there's a number of scores, Howard, that are that we're sure. keeping up with throughout the Mobile area tonight. As we take a look at some of the halftime scores, Baker with a 28 to 7 lead over MGM in the Battle of West Mobile over there. Another key matchup that we're taking a look at: Fairhope and Murphy. A halftime score, 28 to 18. The same score of Davidson Bryant last night. Right. McGill, 18 to 17, a close battle over at halftime. And in college football action, South Alabama with a 10 to 3 lead over Troy at halftime over at Lad People Stadium. Yeah, that game has turned out to be a little bit more of a defensive battle than I thought it was going to be. I uh, I really pictured the USA really pulling away uh, in that football game, but so far Troy has been able to keep it close. Well, they're really trying to build up that rivalry over there in the Sun Belt as right sure. now we're taking a look at the guy that is going to have the most pressure on him in the second half. Darius Tony, a sophomore, he won the quarterback battle, and now he's got to prove why he was the chosen one for these Leopards. We'll be right back with more action in the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. Blunt's got some work to do as they face a 22-point deficit against LaFleur. All right, I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay, so who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, 
became what I've always wanted to be. Welcome into second half coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week presented by School Insights live here on Seymour TV, a production of the Mobile County Public School System. Tim Finnegan, Howard McCain bringing you second half action of tonight's Game of the Week. A little interesting start though, as LaFleur has a 22 to nothing lead here at halftime. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, Tim. I didn't expect that to be the score. I expected the uh, first half to be a little bit more competitive than it has been, but LaFleur, did everything that Coach Schamberger could have wanted his football to do, football team to do in that first half that's come out and that's dominate, Tim, in every facet of the football game. And so far they've done that to the tune of a score of 22 to nothing as teams pick their size of the field coming out in the second half. Now, I believe if I'm correct, I believe LaFleur received the opening kickoff. So Blunt will get the ball first here to begin the second half. Well, good to see that Demetrius yes. Bond, the senior running back for yes. the Blunt Leopards, is back out onto the field with the special teams unit. Before halftime, he went down with a scare. Looks like he took a shot to the knee by defending helmet at, on the play, but good to see him up and moving around. That was a scare for everyone in the stadium. Yeah, his leg isn't wrapped or anything like that. He doesn't seem to be favoring his uh, right leg at all, Tim. So uh, they're going to need him. Let's be honest, they're going to need him. They're going to need him to run the football. They're going to need him to catch passes out of the backfield and create. They're going to need him to do something positive on offense for them to get themselves back into the football game. D'Angelo Stewart to kick this one off. He has two touchdowns of the night, receiving a 26 and 16, including an incredible second wow. touchdown where he took the ball out of the defender's hand on his knees in the end zone that and completed the full motion, because we know how hard it is with the time, with the possession and control. Incredible play. That should be a Sports Center highlight. Stewart kicks it off to start the second half as Blunt's going to take it at the 15-yard line. Test the left side, has blockers, takes a shot on the play, gets back into the middle, bouncing around. He's still alive. As Jerry, as Deontay Purdue on the return, a player is down on the Lafleur sideline over there. Yeah, and I don't see any flags, so we're going to take a look at the uh, replay as our Purdue steps in front of the uh, the other gentleman that was back to get it. And Tim, he just tries to find something. Run into his own guy Pushing right there. His own guy, yeah, which <laughs> changes his, his, his momentum and his direction, forced him back to the right, and they were able to come in. The uh, kickoff coverage team was able to come in and finish off the tackle. So now the ball sits on about the 25 and a half yard line of the Blunt Leopards, Tim. We're early in third quarter as we have an injured player down full of floor, and I believe that is Randy Wiggins, one of the uh, starting corners for the LaFleur Rattlers, and uh, that's a positive sign. He's getting up. He's walking on the field under his own power, so let's just hope that it's something minor and he can get back on the field to play. Absolutely. You never want to see injuries no, in general. No, not at all. Especially this late into the season and for seniors. And we've seen a couple of guys already go down tonight for LaFleur. That's Terrence Massey and also D'Angelo Anderson, who is currently sitting. Both guys are currently sitting on the trainer's table, Tim. They may be done for the night. Tony comes out, has a man shifting over to his right side. A quick snap, he's going to hand it off to Demetrius Vaughn, bounces back into the middle and runs through a wall of defenders and brought down on the play an explosive start for the senior running back. Yeah, DeAndre Hoags steps up and finally makes a stop on, uh, on the running back for the Blunt Leopards. Picked up about eight yards, Tim, on first down. That's a very, very good, very good yardage on first down for Demetrius Vaughn. Second down and about two now for the Blunt Leopards. They spread two receivers out to the right side. Coming out in the I formation, an extra blocker for Vaughn as he gets another carry. This time he's trying the left side, but stopped immediately on the play D. And it looks like he was a, yep. coming up with a huge play. Yep. It was DeAndre Hoax, the yep. junior defensive end, the first one in the backfield on the play. <laughs> just like just like Blood is going to need Demetrius Vaughn to go crazy, LaFleur is going to need DeAndre Hoax to go crazy on defense, okay? That time they went mano a mano. It was won by DeAndre Hoax. About a two-yard loss, Tim, on second down. It's going to be third down and about four, a long four for the Leopards. 
Bunch formation in the backfield. Tony's going to take it. A quick strike out to the right side, and an overthrow brings up an incompletion on the play. No flags, and that'll be a fourth down for the Leopards. Yeah, Derek McCarty. Derek McCarty Jr. was the uh, intended receiver, Tim. And do we have a flag? Somewhere I see the officials convening. Yes, we do have a flag on the play right around the line of scrimmage. Either there was a false start or maybe there might have been holding uh, on someone. They're well, talking about it now. They stopped the special teams unit from coming on the field initially. No indication yet. Tim Portis is our referee. And that's one receiver downfield. That's, uh, that, that's going to be declined uh, by the defense. They'll take the play, which is an incomplete pass, Tim. Ogo County Public Schools class of 2014 won $72 million worth of college scholarships. About 28% of our graduates receive at least one scholarship offer every year. Those include academic and athletic scholarships and awards in the arts, for community service, and for JROTC. Graduating college and career ready, it starts with us. Tim, there was a kid that walked through here a little while ago with some nachos. I Did you wanted, get turned down? I wanted one so bad. Did you tell him who you were? He won't know who I am. You're only, McCain, bro. Only you know who I am. Ooh. Ooh, what a shot on the play. No flags yet as LaFleur brings it up to the 50-yard line, and there is a player down. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's actually writhing in pain, Tim. Demetrius Vaughn getting the punt away yeah. on the play. A skyrocket is coming around and takes a shot from behind on the play. Justin Brown looks like got blindsided. Yeah, and and really it was it, it should have been a penalty flag on that one, Tim. He looked like he may have gotten blocked in the back. So uh, one of the good things that's happening right now is we get a shot. Is he is moving? Okay, he is moving his arms. He is moving his legs, so it wasn't a you know something dirty where it may have caused some type of very serious injury, you know, uh, where, where he can't move. But um, he is definitely in a lot of pain as the uh, as the training staff takes a look at him here, and everybody's taking a knee. Tim, 10-13 remaining in the second. I'm sorry, in the third quarter, and Lafleur is up by a score of 22 to nothing. And speaking of being up, Justin Brown jumps to his feet, so he'll be able to walk off the field under his own power, which is a very very good sign. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We've already had a couple of scares tonight. Well, Tim, luckily, no one's suffered any serious injuries. Well, you know, we did a rivalry game last week, McGill and Murphy, Ooh. and we saw how – Injury clinic. I, I hate to use this word, but I'll use it for lack of a better term, and that's an even better sign as he trots off the field under his own power, Justin Brown. But that, that, that was a violent football game. Uh, guys were going down in that game. You know, they were dropping like flies in that game. And this is a rivalry game. And guys are just, you know, guys are looking to hit just a little bit harder to let them know, hey, look, I'm here. And uh, I'm here to play this football game against my rivals. So uh, guys are going to, you know, jump a little bit higher, run a little bit faster, and hit just a little bit harder in a lot of these rivalry games. Ten minutes, 13 seconds on the clock here in third quarter action. LaFleur with the ball now at the 50-yard line with a fresh set of downs and they go back to work with this possession strategy. Yeah, and that's going to be to run the football, Tim. Now, to be honest with you, they've actually been more proficient in the passing game than they have been in the in the running game tonight. Uh, Leatherwood just hasn't been able to quite get off like we know he can from that running back position. But tonight, it looks like Rodney English has been, been pretty much able to do what he wants to do with the passing game. English comes out. He's going to hand off to Leatherwood, who's met immediately on the play and goes nowhere as he's going to take a loss on the play. Yeah, the timing was all wrong on that on that play from the snap, Tim. Uh, Rodney English sunk the football into his uh, running back stomach, and I think there was some miscommunication on who was going to run the football. It looked like uh, Leatherwood wanted to run the football, but English actually wanted to run it and try to get out on the edge. Uh, they kind of got stopped right in the middle of the handoff in the backfield in that time. Defensive pressure was all over Leatherwood. Looks like about a three-yard loss on first down, second down at about 13. Marcus Sullivan, the junior fullback, joins them in the backfield as Leatherwood's going to get another carry, but stopped once again in the backfield back to the line of scrimmage, and that's going to quickly bring up third down. Yeah, you don't want to see LaFleur get too ultra-conservative coming out in the second half. You want to try to stay 
somewhat aggressive, uh, especially here in the passing game, you know, if possible. You're up 22 to nothing. You're in control of the football game on the scoreboard. And um, you don't want to see LaFleur get ultra conservative. But I can understand what Anthony Schamberger wants to do, Tim, we talked about in the first half. He wants to try to shorten this football game, running a lot of clock with his, uh, with his, with his uh, offense by running the ball. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right being D'Angelo Stewart and single coverage out on the right side, third and about 12 on the play. Inglis drops back to pass, looks over to the left side, has pressure from behind, fires across. And incompletion on the play is going to bring up a fourth and 12. Yeah, he was looking He was looking over here on the near side for Orlando Doss Jr. Ball just came up a little short. Rodney Inglis, Tim, as we look at the replay. Doesn't get an opportunity to get his feet set at all in that offensive play. So he tries to get the ball downfield to Orlando Doss Jr. Not able to set his feet and really stride into the pass, Tim. And it came up short on third down. So it's going to be fourth down and about 12. Punting situation coming up now for the LaFleur Rattlers. Angela Stewart back to punt this one. Blunt is going to send their man back to the 20-yard line. Eight minutes, 40 seconds remaining here in third quarter action. Antonio right back to return this one for the Leopards. It looks like we're going to get a timeout from Blunt. We'll be back with third quarter action. LaFleur leading Blunt 22 to nothing in the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. It started for me when I went into the first grade and then I went on to George Hall Elementary School and from there to Williamson where I graduated. The public school system, it had a great impact on me because not only did it prepare me academically for my future career, but it also prepared me for life. Because of its diversity of, of students and teachers, it really gave me a well-rounded education. Welcome back to third quarter action of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week presented by School Insights live here on Seymour TV, a production of the Mobile County Public School System. The floor Rattlers come out on fourth and 12. D'Angelo Stewart looking to punt this one away as he is backed up all the way to the 32-yard line. Blunt looking to receive this at the 20-yard line. Antonio right back there for the Leopards. High snap, Stewart gets it. A high punt is going to travel to the 30-yard line and take a LaFleur bounce, and they're going to down it near the 22-yard line. Yeah, nice coverage punt that time by D'Angelo Stewart. Tonight's hero so far in the football game, Tim, having hauled in two touchdown passes from quarterback Rodney English by way of 16 yards and 26 yards, the 16-yarder. Man, I'm telling you, that He's thing. He's just trying to get player of the week. That thing was Sports Center top 10 worthy, in my opinion. That that was a, that was incredible. He's just trying to get player of the week, man. <laughs> Nothing big. I, I, I'll, I'd give it to him. Wow. Tony, the Tony and Vaughn in the backfield. It's going to be a handoff to Demetrius Vaughn. He's going to try the right side. It gets away from a couple of defenders, runs through two of them, and brought down. And it looks like he's going to have enough for a fresh set of downs for the Leopards. Yeah, Quintrell Price came in and tried to stick his nose in there against Demetrius Vaughn, who ran that football, honestly, Tim, like he was ticked off. I mean, he ran, you think? That, he ran that football like he was hot at somebody. And it's when, homecoming, man. Hey, and when, it, when, when he gets up ahead of steam like that, I don't want to be the guy to have to bring him down. Well, he's an incredible talent. No doubt that he's going to be able to play at the next level. Oh, sure. About 5'8", 2'10", and just a lot of power as he brings it out to the left side. Runs around Hoax, gets up the field. Another fresh set of downs for the Leopards behind De Demetrius Vaughn, taking him up to the 50-yard line. Yeah, that was a nice job of blocking out there by the wide receiver out in the left flat. He was one-on-one -on -one with the corner, and he did a nice job of allowing Vaughn to uh, get to the outside, Tim. Nice job again by the defensive, by the offensive line to seal off the left side of that defensive line, and they're able to get upfield. But I believe all of that is going to be for naught, Tim, because we have a flag on the play, and I believe it's going to go against the Blunt Leopards. Wow. So we take a look right here. It looks like there might have been a little bit of push at the very end of that one, and they are backing up Blunt. We have Boldy on the offense, number 10. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul remains first down. Antonio Wright called with the hold on the play is going to back up yeah. the levers and nullify that first down conversion. And that's why Vaughn was able to get the edge. 
Tony comes out in the shotgun formation, drops back to pass, has pressure coming from behind, launches down the field and overthrows Shepard on the play, his intended target. Yeah, again, he has to have time, Tim, and he had a little bit of pressure coming at him from his left side. So he just tried to get the ball out of his hands as quickly as possible before he was going to be sacked on the play. As we take a look here, Tony steps back. Now he does get a chance to actually stride into the pass, but he didn't drive on the football. The ball floated over the head of his, uh, his, his intended wide receiver in the middle of the field. That would have been an easy first down as it is. It's second and about 15 yards to go for the Blunt Leopards. Three receiving targets out to the right side, checks it down on a bubble screen, and the receiver gets out of bounds before he's about to take a shot on the play. Yeah, defensive pursuit tonight from sideline to sideline for both of these teams has been really, really great. Both teams showing that they have a lot of team speed. It is so difficult to track a guy down from the other side of the field. LaFleur did another good job. A pickup that time of about seven yards, Tim. So that makes it now third down and about seven or eight coming up for the Blunt Leopards. They need to convert this first down, Tim, continue this drive, and start if, if they have any chance of mounting a comeback. DeAndre Ray, the senior linebacker for the Rattler defense, on the hunt on that one. Great sideline to sideline speed as he's coming right up the middle on this one. Tony, pressure in his face, overthrows his target again, looking for Shepard on the play. And that's going to quickly bring up a fourth down. Yeah, Shepard was tangled up with uh, Darnell Scott one of the linebackers in the middle of the field, and uh, you heard a little bit of a groan. I believe everybody might have been looking for pass interference, but both guys were actually uh, had hands on each other. So good no call there by the officials. So that's going to bring up fourth down, Tim, and the uh, punt team is out now for the Blunt Leopards as Demetrius Vaughn goes deep to receive this snap and back to receive for the, uh, the uh, LaFleur Rattlers, Tim, is Gary McKellen. Mobile County Public School students are using technology in the classroom every day to enhance learning. All of our academic classrooms have smart boards and wireless internet. Students complete class assignments and projects on tablets, laptops, and other electronic devices. And now all students have access to one terabyte of cloud storage and Microsoft Office products at home and on the go. Innovation in the classroom? It starts with us. Now that was a good punt by Demetrius Vaughn, Tim, because it flipped field position on the uh, LaFleur Rattlers. So they're gonna come out and start their next drive at their own 27 yard line. So right now, Tim, it would be very, very big for this Blunt Leopard team, for their confidence, and also for their ability to get back into this football game if they can somehow create a turnover here deep in LaFleur territory. Seven minutes, 26 seconds remaining here in third quarter action, both teams trying to continue, or trying to build momentum. Here in the second half, we talked about LaFleur being a second half team by nature, but first half has been huge for the Rattlers as they come out a quick flag on the play on first down. Leatherwood trying to get through there might have been a holding penalty. Yeah, I believe you're right, Tim. It's going to be holding because uh, as soon as the play was over and he got up off of the ground, I saw one of the blunt players kind of, you know, motioning to the referee like, you know, did you see that? And uh, yeah, they did. So <laughs> the flag came out, Tim, and that's, that's going to be holding against LaFleur. So again, if you're blunt, now they're going to be backed up from their 27 yard line. Well, I'll take that back. It's going to be a spot foul. Holding number 75. It's 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Remains first down. So the flag was actually tossed at the 15 yard line, Tim. It's a spot foul. So they mark it off 10 yards from there and push it back to the 15 yards of yard line of LaFleur. So right now it's second and about 20 to 21 yards for the Rattlers. First and 20 now as English comes out, throws a strike out to the right side, connects with Polk and dropped immediately for a loss on the play. Yeah, just nothing out there. I don't know if the turf is a little bit damp or something. I'm not sure. But uh, he just lost his footing, and in losing his footing, he lost about two more yards, Tim. So now that's going to bring up third. That's going to bring up third and about 22, 23 yards to go for LaFleur. And uh, a drive that started out at their own 27-yard line is now all the way back now to their own, what, about their own 12-yard line? Well, two key moments that happened in the first half, a fumble and then a negative punt helped LaFleur get on the board early as they were deep in their territory at the time and an incompletion. All the play is going to bring up a third and extremely long. LaFleur was able to capitalize 
on the opposite situation. Blunt had a negative bunt on at one point and a fumble this deep in their own territory. So Blunt looking to try to make something happen here on third and long because at this point, if LaFleur is unable to make up any grounds, you got to think it's going to bring up a punting situation. Well, if you're LaFleur, you don't want to make a mistake with the football deep in your territory like this. Just do a simple handoff to Leatherwood, punt the football, Tim, and play defense. The bread and butter of the LaFleur offense tonight on third down has been a quarterback scramble, but the passing attack has been highly efficient as a completion and a bobble, but still retains possession on the play. A short strike is going to bring up a quick fourth down and long. Yeah, only about maybe a two-yard pickup, if, if that, Tim. I, I, I actually think he only got back to the line of scrimmage or maybe even picked up one yard on that play. But again, dangerous play, Tim, as we take a look at some scores. Halftime, McGill with an 18-17 lead over Theodore. South Alabama jumps out to a 26-6 lead over Troy in third quarter action. There we go. In World Series action, in the sixth inning, the Royals increase their lead to 2 to nothing over the Giants, trying to take a 2-1 to one game lead in that series. The floor comes out. Stewart with the snap gets a high punt, doesn't go very far. And it's going to take a leopard bounce as they're going to down it near the 30-yard line, and that might be the momentum that Mark Hurd's offense is looking for. Yeah, if they can't do anything with this, with this field position, Tim, then it's probably going to be a long second half for the Blunt Leopards. It can't be gift-wrapped for you better than it was just then. Ball sits on the 33-yard line of LaFleur, first and 10 Blunt. Let's see what they can do. Well, they've been trying to go with Demetrius Vaughn. A series of penalties have backfired that offensive attack, but the senior has been highly efficient here to start the second half. A lot of pressure on Kadarius Stoney, the sophomore quarterback. He's been looking for his junior tight end, Charles Shepard, a lot on their last series and trying to get him involved here on this one. Tony comes out. Play action fake, rolls out to his left, has pressure in his face, lobs it up for Shepard and gets a completion as he gets up the left side of the field and finally pushed out of bounds by DeAndre Ray. A late hit brings in two flags out of the secondary down to the 10-yard line. Yeah, and that's going to be a half the distance to the goal line uh, because that's going to be a uh, personal foul penalty late hit. And there's a nice job right there. And we've seen Alabama run this play several times with Charleston Fowler uh, whenever the uh, – he, he, he's, actually goes, he's actually in the H-back position uh, at the snap of the ball. He simply runs behind the uh, offensive line and then leaks out into the flat as the quarterback does a quarterback waggle out into the flat and just hits him wide open. Nice job of pitch and catch right there between Tony and his big tight end. But right there at the end, as he was going out of bounds, he got pushed. And uh, that's going to be a personal foul put it against LaFleur. So that's going to be half the distance to the goal line. And that's going to be first and goal at about the five-yard line. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds from the defensive team. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. DeAndre Ray, the ever-aggressive linebacker for this <laughs> Rattler defense, yeah. trying to rattle sure. the offense <laughs> of blood and send a little bit of an extra message afterwards. Tony comes out, hands off to Vaughn, going to test the right side, gets back into the middle, and a swarm of Rattler defenders is all over him on the first and goal carry. Yeah, that's a good job right there by the defense because the offensive line did a great job of stringing that play out as they, were, as they got their push against the defensive front. They actually opened up some rushing lanes, but guys from the secondary were able to come in and fill those holes Get, get Demetrius Vaughn before he can get to the uh, goal line, Tim. No gain on the play. Ball at the original line of scrimmage. Just inside the five-yard line, second and goal, uh, Blunt. Samuel Wilson checks in for Blunt at running back. Two options in the backfield, Wilson and Vaughn. Tony out of the shotgun formation. Has Shepard in the slot. Takes the snap. Look to pitch it out to Vaughn, but goes nowhere as the defense was all over him. Wow, that was a nice job on the inside that time by Alex Davis of the LaFleur Rattlers. Alex Davis is the uh, a junior linebacker, Tim, 5'11", 230 pounds. We take a look here, just stays at home, Tim. Does a good job on the backside of, of uh, containment, backside containment of the defense, and uh, 
that was just a gift wrap uh, a tackle there for the defensive end. But maintains possession on the play, third and goal. They're out of the I formation. Two receivers out to the right side. They're going to hand off to Demetrius Vaughn. Tries the left side, goes nowhere. Fourth and goal now for Blunt. I don't know what the uh, I don't know what message was sent to Lafleur during practice this week, but whatever it was, they got it because that was another good job by Jelani Petway. Uh, who actually is their nose tackle, Tim, able to get a speedy running back like Demetrius Vaughn down and actually able to track him down from behind, Tim. So here it is, third and fourth and goal now for the Blunt Leopards. Just inside the five-yard line, Tim. Let's see what happens. Howard, half of the defenders for LaFleur are seniors, and quite possibly for a lot of them, this might be their last game to suit these last two games. Excuse me to suit up, so they're going to play with a lot of passion. A quick strike across the middle. No flags. No flags. Triple right. coverage, it looked like, on the play. Broken up and a turnover on downs. LaFleur will take over inside the five-yard line. Yeah, that's just a great job by the secondary uh, for the uh, LaFleur Rattlers as Tony looks to the back of the end zone for his big target. I believe that's Derek McCarty, Jr. He's uh, actually five foot nine, 160 pounds, Tim. Just no doing on the pitch and catch. So ball goes back over to LaFleur. Now LaFleur is backed up deep in their own territory. They're at their own four and a half yard line, so they have to be very, very careful with the football. Three minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Neither team has been able to find the end zone this quarter. LaFleur holding on to a 22 to nothing lead as they take over inside the five yard line. English comes out, hands off to Leatherwood, tries the right side, and brought down immediately at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten, Leatherwood goes nowhere on the play. Yeah, Leatherwood has found it some, you know, found uh, running just tough sledding tonight. Hasn't been able to get much of anything going over the right side or the left side of this uh, defensive front. So they've done a great job of containment on the uh, running back. So again, if you're LaFleur, just stay conservative, continue to run the clock, continue to run the ball, and just you know try to get out of there and play defense. But you don't want to make a mistake with the football. Second and nine upcoming for the offense. The Rattlers spread it out. D'Angelo Stewart in single coverage out to the bottom of your screen. Another handoff to James Leatherwood. Evades a couple of defenders, gets back up the middle, and finally brought down for a huge gain and a fresh set of downs. Yeah, it looks like it was a touchdown saving tackle that time. I believe that was Kalen Wright. As we take a look now, right here, if he would have bounced that football, Tim, outside instead of inside where uh, defensive help was able to come and finish him off, there's a good chance he could have ran another 20 yards. But he chose to bounce it back inside where he was tackled down. Able to pick up enough for a first down, Tim. Gets his team out of the shadows of their own end zone. Two minutes of counting left here in third quarter action. Leatherwood says, feed me the rock. English comes out, throws a strike. Almost intercepted on the play. Yeah, that should have been. That should have been a pick that time, Tim. In on that, that was Dominique Williams. That is his second should have been pick tonight. Because remember, he had that football caught in the end zone against uh, Dominique. As we uh, take a look now against Dominic Stewart. That time, that one hit him in the hands. That would have been a huge turnover in uh, LaFleur territory. He was going for D'Angelo Stewart, just like it was in the first half. Had a chance to pick it off, failed, and D'Angelo St Stewart scored. English out of single back formation, hands off to Leatherwood, goes nowhere on the play. And that's going to bring up a third down. The clock continues to roll. One minute, 45 seconds counting here in third quarter action as Blunt is trying to come up with a defensive stand late here in the third quarter, trying to get the ball back to their offense. Did you see Leatherwood stop his feet, Tim? When he got to the, after he got the handoff and he got to the line of scrimmage, he stopped his feet. As a running back, that is a huge, huge no-no. Never stop your feet. He stopped his feet, the hole collapsed. There was just nothing there for him to for him to pick up on that uh, on that on that second down run. Coach him up, Mr. McCain. Coach oh, him up. No, I, you know, hey, <laughs> I do my best. Third and seven. <laughs> play action fake. English rolls out to his right side. Has some blocks. Ooh, takes a low shot on the play. Yeah. And the stop. At yep. the 30-yard line, a two-yard gain on the play is going to bring up a fourth and five as the clock ticks under a minute remaining in the quarter. Yeah, Justin Brown made that stop. And, Tim, how many games have you and I done and we've cautioned about putting your quarterback in a position to get hurt? 
Remember the McGill game last week. Oof. Remember when, when, when the quarterback went back to uh, feel that, that punt and uh, got knocked out of the football game, and it just changed the whole complexion of what the offense was able to do. So, you know, Rodney English has played a, a great game tonight for LaFleur. No sense in getting him in position, Tim, where he can get uh, hit unnecessarily and potentially get injured, and it changes the fortunes of this uh, offense for the rest of the evening. Stewart gets a slow snap on the play, gets the punt away, as it might have hit the back of one of the blunt players, but they pick it up anyway. 45-40 gets a block down to the 40, 35-30. A flag comes out back at the 50-yard line. Two flags out there. That's going to be a block in the back against the return team, the Blunt Leopards. And that's right around about the uh, 49, 50-yard line, Tim. So uh, that's going to be a spot penalty, and that's going to nullify a nice return that time by the uh, Blunt Leopards' uh, Antonio Wright. So uh, that's going to push the football back into negative territory. That's the Blunt side of the 50-yard line, and Blunt will take over here late in the third quarter, Tim. 7.9 seconds left in this third quarter. Well, Blunt has been able to hold the Rattlers' offense. Scoreless. No one scored sure. here in the third quarter. Turn, flag in the back on the receiving team. It's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. At the same time, Anthony Schamberger's offense has continued to be productive with the possession scheme here on offense tonight. Yeah, even though they haven't scored, the offense has been able to put together enough plays, Tim, where they can eat up clock. We're almost out of the third quarter. More than likely, this next snap by the Blunt Leopards will be the uh, final snap of the third quarter. So LaFleur will go into the uh, fourth quarter, the final quarter of this ball game, up 22 to nothing. Even though their offense hasn't scored, they've eaten up a lot of clock. Demetrius Vaughn gets a carry straight up the middle, gets a first down and then some as they cross into LaFleur territory. And that is going to take us to fourth quarter action. The Blunt Leopards have the ball. They're going to have a fresh set of downs crossing into the LaFleur side of the field. They're facing a 22 to nothing deficit here in the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. It's here, the MCPSS mobile app. It's a way for you to stay connected and informed with all of the happenings around the school district. Receive weather alerts, check your child's grades and homework, plus more. Watch sports, original programming, find school locations and read the latest news. Stay connected with all your favorite social networking sites. Download it today for free. Welcome back to coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. The LaFleur Rattlers leading the Blunt Leopards 22 to nothing here in fourth quarter action. Mark Hurt's offense has to go back to work right now with a fresh set of downs. They cross into LaFleur territory. The defense has been standing tall here in the second half hour. Yeah, they have been, and, and, and they pretty much uh, – that was evident, Tim, on that last drive when Blunt had the football inside the four-yard line of LaFleur and were not able to score. Demetrius Vaughn gets the handoff and goes nowhere on the play. Looking over at the sidelines, it looks like D'Lo Anderson, one of the junior linebackers, is getting worked on over the sale lines. Hopefully he's going to be all right. Well, you know, he went down in the uh, first uh, half of this football game, Tim, and uh, the uh, training staff has been trying to do everything they can to try to get him back on the field. But so far, it's pretty much been for naught. So I believe his night, you know, pretty much is done, Tim. So uh, he's going to sit this one out. Second and 10 now, 11 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in our game. Tony drops back to pass, looks over to the left side, lobs it up, has two receiving targets, an incompletion, and a flag comes out of the play down at the five-yard line. Yeah, his intended receiver on that play, I believe that was Gregory Williams, but he was blanketed by two defenders as we take a look at the um, replay. Quintrell Price, I believe, is going to be flagged on the play as looks like the wide receiver got bumped he was also being covered back there in the secondary by DeWitt Lambert. So that's going to be a, a, a pass interference penalty as we get the call from Tim Portis. That's going to be pass interference against the defense. That's going to be a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Wait a minute. Okay, they're, 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 take, they're, they're walking it back so they can mark it off. I'm sorry. I was wondering why they were going in the opposite direction like the penalty was against Blunt. They're just trying to walk it out. Okay. <laughs> walk it out. Okay. You got it? I, I hear you, DeRoe. Defensive pass interference. 
15-yard <laughs> penalty, yardage results, and a first down. One thing I have noticed about uh -huh. some of these calls, we haven't heard about the blue team. No, we haven't. Not in the second half, so somebody must have somebody must have called Tim Portis on it. That must have been the key to this defensive stand in the second half. Must have been. Tony comes out looking over to his left side, has all sorts of time, and almost picked off by DeAndre Ray on the play. An incompletion is going to bring up. <laughs> It's going to be, I think it's going to bring up third down and about third down and 10, I believe. No, that shouldn't be. That should be second down. Second down on the play. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's going to be second down. 11 minutes, 14 seconds remaining on the clock. <laughs> boy, Demetria Ray, if, if he could have that one back, Tim, boy, you know he, he would want to. He wants to make that INT. Demetrius Vaughn in the backfield, gets the handoff, tries to go up the middle, breaks away on the right side into the 20, 15, 10, 5, down to the end zone and into the end zone. Demetrius Vaughn, a 31-yard touchdown run, gets the Leopards on the board for the first time tonight here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Tim, and, there are, and most importantly, there are no flags on the play. So that 31-yard scamper by Demetrius Vaughn is going to stand and just a nice job there of just getting to the outside and just outrunning the defense all the way to the corner of the uh, pylon, and that's going to give Le uh, Blunt Leopards their first score of the night, Tim. No PAT, so Blunt lines up to go for two. The floor's already been able to convert two two-point conversions tonight. They had a failed third one as Blunt attempts their first of the night. Tony drops back to pass, looking over to the left side. Has a man on the right, checks it down, and gets the completion on the play. Getting the Leopards eight points on the board with 11 minutes and six seconds remaining in the game. LaFleur with a 22 to eight lead in the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. Welcome back to the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week presented by School Insights live here on Seymour TV, a production of the Mobile County Public Schools. Tim Finnegan, Howard McCain bringing you tonight's Game of the Week rivalry matchup LaFleur with a 22-8 lead now after a 31-yard touchdown run from senior running back Demetrius Vaughn gets the Leopards on the board finally here in the fourth quarter with 11 minutes and six seconds remaining in our game. Yeah, still a lot of uh, still a lot of uh, time left in the ball game, Tim, but a lot of a lot of ground to be covered for the Blunt Leopards. Now Demetrius Vaughn is set to kick off. Now I wonder if they're going to kick this short. I don't see them. They're not lined up in a, in a formation for an onside, so I think they're just going to kick this one, try to kick this one deep, Tim, and just play defense. Well, we've seen Demetrius Vaughn on punt duties, but never on kickoffs yet. As he has a holder down at the 40-yard line and just blasts this one down to the 15. LaFleur's going to take it. Reverse field over up to the 30-yard line and finally brought down. Yeah, that was T. John Fillion. Uh, on that kickoff return, Tim. So, for LaFleur, they played ball control offense all of the third quarter, Tim. They pretty much did They did not even get anywhere close to the end zone, but ate up a lot of clock. A huge 7A Region 1 matchup. Fairhope with a 27-24 lead over Murphy in the third quarter action and college football action from Lad People Stadium, South Alabama, 24 to six over Troy in the fourth quarter. Yeah, go Joey Jones, go Jags. How about the Fairhope Murphy score? Tim, as we take a look here, we can see the, you see the HR right there on the field here at uh, Blunt High School. And if, if anyone who's familiar with uh, some of the uh, news as we get a timeout taken here by the, uh, by the uh, uh, Rattlers, Blunt has dedicated the remainder of their season to uh, Hawaii Robinson, who was uh, brutally murdered here in uh, Pritchard, Alabama, and her killer is still on the loose, and uh, police is trying to track them down still. But uh, just a great show of support by the uh, Blunt High School and uh, their fans and the faculty to uh, honor 
uh, young Hawaii Robinson by putting her initials on the field, and they will remain on the field for the remainder of this season. Again, Blunt dedicating their season to Hawaii Robinson. Well, we talked to the principal, Mr. Jerome Woods, earlier today on Countdown to Kickoff in our preseason show, and he just could not express more about how much the community rallies around the yeah. Blunt program and how much the Blunt program rallies for the community. Yeah, and, and, and it was a great show of, um, of outpouring by Blunt High School when they honored the family, even presented them with a check at halftime at one of their games earlier this season. Right English comes out of the shotgun formation. A quick snap. He's going to keep it himself. Stiff arms the defender, but ripped down in the backfield on the play. A huge stop for the Leopards defense. Yeah, I think LaFleur is starting to get away from some of the things that uh, that, that caused him to be successful early in the, in, the, uh, in the ball game. As we take a look here, just a simple uh, option read by Rodney English. Um, he chose to actually keep the football instead of handing it off. And usually what, the, what he does is he takes a look and see what the defensive end is going to do. If the defensive end bites on the uh, fake on the run, he'll keep it and, and, and run it himself. But if he doesn't, he'll go ahead and commit the handoff as we have a new running back into the backfield. Jacob Green, the junior running back in the backfield with English, as he has Stewart in motion, all received on the right side, and a flag comes out on the play. Now, will this be offsides on the defense or a false start on the offense? Because the defensive player did jump, and one of the offensive players jumped right after that. So it's going to be a false start against the offense. So the Rattlers starting to self-destruct just a little bit here down the stretch, Tim. And we talked about it in the uh, pre in, in the uh, in the uh, halftime that normally Lafleur comes out in the second half, and they're a strong second half team. They did everything they needed to do in the third quarter, but here early on in the fourth team, a lot of miscues. Ball is now deep into uh, LaFleur territory, second and about 25 coming up for LaFleur. They flipped on us. Yeah, they did. They fooled us. Stewart in motion, three receiving options to the right, but it's going to be a handoff to Green, who is met immediately and goes nowhere. A loss on the play brings up a third and long now for LaFleur. Yep, it's the old banana in the tailpipe. Excuse me? The old banana in the tailpipe. I was just making sure that I heard that correctly. Do you remember what the, you remember what scene that was from? No. It was in Beverly Hills Cop. Still haven't seen it. Remember, oh, my God. Remember when Eddie Murphy needed to stall out the car? Still haven't seen it. Okay, go ahead. A World Series <laughs> action in the sixth <laughs> inning. The Royals with a 3-1 to one lead now over the Giants. It's new on DVD. I'll check it out on Netflix. From, from 86. I'll check so, it out from Netflix. Okay. okay. I like old movies. <laughs> I just haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> we won't tell anyone. <laughs> Ronnie English rolls out, looking back across the middle, and incompletion on the play brings up a fourth down, but a flag in the backfield, back around the six-yard line, and a holding call against LaFleur. That will be declined, and that will bring up a fourth down. They already have the bun returner back <laughs> for a blunt. <laughs> They're saying, hey, hurry up. We're trying to get back in this game. Holding on the white team. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Now, I'm actually kind of curious as to why Blunt declined that penalty. To bring up fourth down. I understand that, but if you back them up a few yards more and you stop them, you, you actually gain that much more in field position. I don't know. Again, they're I've, anxious to get back on offense. Listen, Howard. I've said it week in and week out. That's why coaches coach, and that's why I'm up in the booth. Stewart takes it. A high punt is going to be taken around the 40 yard line. Blunt's going to bring it out up the left side. Has a couple of blocks. Gets back into the middle to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. Has blocks. Five and into the end zone. The Blunt Leopards, a 42 yard punt return, gets them back on the board with eight minutes and 53 seconds remaining in our game, and the blunt sideline has exploded. Tim, that was Antonio Wright. As we take a look here at the replay, shows I don't know what the heck I'm talking about when it comes to football, but Antonio Wright feels it and just, really he did all that by himself, Tim. He did have, he had some help from his guys, but man, he did a great job of exercising field vision and was able to get into the end zone for a 42 yard, Punt return touchdown. Our current score, LaFleur leading 22 to 14 as Blunt comes out to attempt a second two-point conversion tonight as the clock stops eight minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the game, and a new Blunt Leopards team has shown up in this fourth quarter. 
Tony drops back to pass, has pressure in his face, goes across the middle, an incompletion on the play. A failed two-point conversion will leave our score 22 to 14. We'll be right back with more fourth quarter action in the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. Diesel is a very big industry, and uh, I went into it in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tenney. When Jacob graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, went all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech, start your future today. Welcome back to fourth quarter action of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. The LaFleur Rattlers now leading 22-14 after a 42-yard punt return by the Blunt Leopards. Gets them back on the board. A failed two-point conversion leaves our score 22-14. But this has been a brand new Leopards team here in the fourth quarter, Howard. Tim, I've said it before, and I'm going to say it one more time again tonight. Say it. Hooey, we've got ourselves a ball game. A high kick is taken at the five-yard line by the Rattlers, bringing back towards the middle of the field. Breaks away from a couple of defenders. 30, 35, 40, 45, and pushed out of bounds. Demetrius Vaughn with the hit on the play. No flags, and LaFleur will take over. Gary McKellen on the uh, punt return, on the kickoff return, Tim, and that, listen, that was big, okay? No, it did not go for a score, but what he did as we watch here, able to find a running lane, and there was a wall on the right side, and he was able to get to the outside. Thank goodness Demetrius Vaughn was back in coverage uh, as the last man standing to bring him down. But what that does, if LaFleur does not pick up a single yard on this, on this set of, of downs, Tim, field position, they can flip field position on Blunt. So that punt return, that kickoff return, was really, really big. LaFleur comes out. First down, it's going to be a handoff to Leatherwood. He's going to drive the right side and goes nowhere. Stopped in the backfield. Might be a loss of a yard or two as the clock continues to roll. Eight minutes, 30 seconds remaining in our game. Yeah, Kalen Wright made the stop on uh, on Leatherwood as the clock continues to tick, and that's exactly what LaFleur wants to have happen. But LaFleur cannot continue to afford these negative plays. That was a negative, that was a negative play that time, Tim. One yard loss by uh, Leatherwood that's going to bring up second down and 11 here in the fourth quarter. Eight points separate these two teams. Eight minutes remaining in our game. LaFleur trying to add to their 22 to 14 lead. Blunt has scored two unanswered touchdowns here in the fourth quarter, a punt return and a rushing touchdown. As LaFleur comes out, Leatherwood hands up. Gets the carry and goes nowhere as he has stopped, and it is quickly third down from the 45-yard line. Yeah, uh, Marcus Sullivan was the lead block on that running play for Leatherwood. If he goes through the hole, Tim, Sullivan has to find somebody to block. The lead blocker didn't block anybody. The defense came crashing in on top of Leatherwood. He was only able to get back to the original, well, at, back to the line of scrimmage, Tim. So that was third down and long, third down and 11 now for the Rattlers. They have only, they've only, what, negative one yard on this uh, on this series. Right, English comes out in the bunch formation. Leatherwood, the running back in the backfield. Green is an extra blocker. English drops back to pass. Two flags in the backfield, and a quick strike is stopped immediately for another loss. It looks like it might have a holding penalty coming up here on third yeah. down, but quickly, fourth down after the penalty. Yeah, and the coaching staff is already signaling that they're going to decline that penalty. They'll take the play, which was no gain on third down, possibly a loss. Already so, got the punt unit out there. So, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're going to uh, decline this, this, uh, this penalty, take the play. Holding. On the white team, penalty is declined, fourth down. Yeah, that brings up fourth down, so LaFleur has to give the ball back. So now the coaching staff and the fans for the LaFleur Rattlers are asking, you know, can we hold uh, here late in the football game? Not that we're, you know, not that we have this thing in the bag and we're going to win. Can we hold? Remember, only eight points separate both of these teams. So a touchdown and a two-point conversion, Tim, and we're tied. 
Antonio Wright back to return this one for Blunt. He already had a 42-yard touchdown return earlier in the quarter. A high snap. D'Angelo Stewart, a low punt, is going to roll. And it's going to be picked up on the play. Blunt's going to try to bring this one out again to the 30-yard line. Backing up, back up to the 30-yard line. Tripped up and brought down. That was scary for the Blunt coaches on the play, holding their breath as he stepped back five yards. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you because he, he looked like he wanted to try to circle back and try to outflank the, uh, the, the uh, outflank coverage. Fourth quarter action in the battle for West Mobile. Baker with a 34-14 lead over MGM. Fairhope jumping out to a 40-24 lead in the third quarter over Murphy. St. Paul's and Viger, a one, one point separates a 14-13 lead by the Saints in the fourth quarter. Ashley Johnson's Viger Wolves are trying to make a name for themselves before the season's over. Yeah, and also I saw where uh, Desherius Flowers uh, accepted an invitation to play in the U.S. Army All-American game. So far, he is the only invitee from this state. Demetrius Vaughn with another carry. Around the right side, back into the middle, and that's going to be about a six-yard gain on the play. Second and four upcoming for the Blunt offense. Yeah, man, this is a huge, huge uh, drive here, not just for Blunt, but for LaFleur. If LaFleur comes out here in the second half and gives this football game right back to Blunt, they are going to be kicking themselves all week long. Six minutes remaining in the game. Blunt facing a 22-14 deficit. Demetrius Vaughn gets another carry left side, goes through a defender up the middle, picks up a fresh set of downs as they get closer to that 50-yard marker. Tim, that's called trucking a guy right there. Hit stick. That's called trucking a guy. <laughs> when you just lower your shoulder and you just run, not over him, but you absolutely run through him as we watch Vaughn build up a head of steam. And right there, you can see he wasn't looking to be tackled. He was looking to make a hit as he ran right into Quintrell Price first down. Vaughn's going to get another carry right up the middle, crosses the 50-yard line, and is going to get a minimal game, three yards maybe on the play, second and seven upcoming for the Leopards. Yeah, again, this is a big series for the LaFleur defense, Tim. You know, they, they, can't, they, they can't continue to bend, 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 and break as they've done here in the uh, fourth quarter, uh, able to give up. They, they gave up one touchdown rushing to Vaughn and also a special teams touchdown to, uh, to Wright. And we've seen Tony utilize play action as he drops back to pass right here looking for one of his targets and gets it a completion and a fresh set of downs might have been tipped on the play but nonetheless coming up with control on the play was Antonio Wright making a play for the leverage as we take a look right here Tony looking over to the left side tipped by the defensive line but Able to make the reception was Antonio Wright on the sidelines and another fresh set of downs for the Leopards. Yeah, that was Jelani Petway that was able to get his big mitt up into the passing lane of Tony, and he did everything he was supposed to do, everything he's taught to do as a, a defensive lineman, that if you can't make it to the quarterback, get your hands up. Maybe you get a deflection to start the tip drill. Tony in the backfield all alone. Two receiving targets out to his right. Checks it down to Charles Shepard. Gets a completion. A flag comes out in the backfield, though, back at the 50-yard line. Now, was that going to be a late hit on the quarterback? Because where that flag is, and that's what it's going to be, Tim, it's going to be a, a, a penalty, a personal foul penalty roughing the passer against LaFleur. Well, actually, he, uh, both players went out of the uh, frame before we could see what happened. But uh, that's what the uh, call is going to be from Tim Porters. It's going to be a uh, personal foul penalty. So, Tim, that's going to tack another 15 yards onto the uh, Shepard catch. That's going to tack another 15 yards onto the end of the catch by Shepard, Tim. That's going to push the ball all the way down into the red zone of the LaFleur Rattlers as we continue to see LaFleur self-destruct here on defense late in this ball game, Tim, in the fourth quarter. Check out this blunt sidelines. I mean, the fans are into it. <laughs> you can't help but hear it. They are reviving themselves along with the team. Fresh set of downs from the 20-yard line. Demetrius Vaughn gets the carry, goes around the left side, explodes back into the middle, breaks a couple of tackles, dragging defenders with him, and into the end zone. Demetrius Vaughn, his second touchdown of the quarter. A 21-yard rush right through the LaFleur defense gets them within two. That, that run right there just epitomizes the type of back that Demetrius Vaughn is. 
he just does not quit. And he's one of those backs, Tim, that as the game goes on, he seems to get stronger. And he just simply just barrels through the LaFleur defense like it wasn't even there, like they were made of paper. And he goes to the end zone 21 yards later. He's in for another score. The biggest play of the game right here. LaFleur with a 22-20 lead. Blunt coming out for a two-point conversion. They will take a timeout. They will take a timeout. Fourth quarter action. What an impressive display of heart for the Leopards as they've been able to come all the way back in the fourth quarter. Uh, two rushing touchdowns for Demetrius Vaughn. One punt return. World Series action, sixth inning. The Giants fighting back themselves, but they trail three to two to the Royals. Yeah, Royals trying their best to hold on, and that's been one hot team uh, since the uh, playoffs started in our in, in Major League Baseball. But the Blunt Leopards tonight, they're, yeah. they have continued to climb back as they are coming up out of this timeout with the biggest play of the night. Four minutes, 40, Four minutes and 34 seconds remaining in our game. They trail by two points right here. They attempt another two-point conversion. It's been a tale of two halves. I mean, it's, this has just been a dominating performance here in this second half by the Blunt Leopards. Now, we didn't see any of that in the third quarter, but, man, oh, man, we've seen them just come alive, just really just, just catch fire here in the fourth quarter as they line up for this two-point conversion. Tony in the backfield, Vaughn to his left. Drops back to pass, looking to his left, looking to his right, lobs it up for his receiver, and gets a completion. Gets a completion on the play by who else but Antonio Wright coming up with a two-point conversion, and the Leopard sideline has exploded as they tie the game at 22 apiece with four minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the game. Tim, Antonio Wright, go ahead. We'll be back with more. Quarters, the LaFleur Rattlers were leading 22 to nothing, and just in the fourth quarter, three touchdowns and two two point conversions have gotten the Leopards back into this game. It's just been an incredible second half for Antonio Wright, who's actually playing more like Antonio Brown from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, he has been Mr. Everything on offense here uh, in the second in the second half, and he almost single-handedly has gotten his team back into this ball game. Tim, 22-22 is our score here at Blunt High School. Vaughn coming out to kick this one away. Four minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the game. We are tied at 22 after three quarters of LaFleur leading 22 to nothing. Mark Hurts Leopards have fought all the way back as Vaughn boots this one down to the 10 yard line. The floor is going to take it up to the 20. 25 spins out of a tackle and brought down at the 24 yard line. Yeah, that's T. John Felian that uh, returned the uh, kickoff for LaFleur. And obviously, Tim, if you're not even here in the stadium, you can definitely, definitely tell at home watching this football game where momentum is right now, Tim. It's here. It's on this. It's on the home side of the field as Blunt has erupted for 22 points here in the fourth quarter against Lafleur. Right now, Lafleur has got to right the ship, Tim. They're reeling. Well, they've got to get a little more aggressive on offense. Their last couple of plays have been a little bit of conservative. Yes. They've been trying to play possession football yes. and keep the ball out of the hands of the Blunt offense. They did it for three quarters. Fourth quarter action got a little conservative. They've got four minutes and 30 seconds to work with. Rodney English coming out and throws a strike across the middle, broken up, no flags on the play, quickly second down. And you don't want to see Rodney English try to force the issue. Okay, it's a tie ball game. It's back to being zero to zero. Okay, let's go all the way back to the beginning. What was our game plan coming in at the very beginning of the football game? It was to run the football, mix it up with the pass. Don't get one-sided with your offensive approach. Don't come out and start just throwing the football. Stay within your offense. Again, the game is zero to zero. Continue to run your offense if you're LaFleur. Floor comes out, spreads James Leatherwood out as a receiver and single coverage out on the right side. They shift D'Angelo Stewart over into the slot. And it looks like there's going to be a timeout yeah. by LaFleur on there the play. There was a confusion. 
We're going to be back with more fourth quarter action with a tie ball game, 22 apiece between Blunt and LaFleur, the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week, and it is living up to the game of wow. the week <laughs> as LaFleur and Blunt are now tied at 22 apiece with four minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the ball game. Second down for the Rattlers. English rolls out to his right, has blockers, looking back to the opposite side of the field, throws a strike, and they will call a completion on the play. Yeah, and that, that completion is going to go for about five yards, closer to six yards on second down, Tim. So it comes now, it becomes now third and manageable for LaFleur. At this point in the football game and at this point on the field, LaFleur has to pick up this first down, Tim, as we get an official's timeout right now. Um, I'm not sure if they want to discuss the last play. They're coming over to uh, the head coach for Blunt, Mark Hurt, to talk about something possibly concerning that last play. But if you're LaFleur, Tim, you can't give this ball back. You just can't give it back to this, this, this blunt leopard offense. They're hot. They're red hot. Well, LaFleur's got to get a little more aggressive here on a third and manageable here right. on the upcoming play. Because now your whole mindset for LaFleur has changed. You've gone to being up 22 to nothing and saying, okay, let's do what we have to do to hold on and win this football game. Okay, now Blunt has fought back and they've tied the football game. Now your philosophy goes from what do we have to do to hold on to this football game, now we got to talk about what do we need to do to win the game. So your whole offensive philosophy changes, Tim, and you're right. LaFleur got too conservative in that third quarter, and they allowed Blunt to come out, seize the momentum, get a couple of scores under their belt, and now they're back in this football game and it's tied. Ron English spreads out a receiver. James Leatherwood in the backfield at quarterback. Evades a couple of defenders and gets up the field and out of bounds That's for big. a fresh set of downs for the Rattlers. That's big. That's big because not only does it pick up a first down and move the chains for the offense, it does not put the ball back into the hands of this red-hot blunt offense. So you get to hold the ball for a little bit longer. You get to melt some clock. 355 remaining in this football game, and you continue this drive. So that was a big, big pickup that time by Leatherwood. First down LaFleur. Ball sits on their own 42-43 yard line. Leatherwood back at quarterback. Gets a quick snap, goes up the middle. Met immediately, maybe picks up two yards on the play as they cross the 40. Yeah, it looks like LaFleur has started to employ a bit of a wildcat uh, offensive set with Leatherwood in the backfield. Now remember, Leatherwood can throw the football, Tim. So yeah, they may be baiting Blunt into something. Try to show him that offensive, that, that wildcat look a couple of times. Maybe try to bait those safeties down close to the line of scrimmage. And who knows, maybe you can get D'Angelo Williams over the top for a big hitter downfield, maybe even a score. D'Angelo Williams, huh? I mean, D'Angelo Stewart, I'm already thinking It's not Sunday, Sunday yet. It's, it's not, not Sunday, Sunday yet. yet. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's well, look, he's injured, so I'm not going to play him in my fantasy lineup anyway. Leatherwood takes the carry, but a flag quickly comes out on the blunt sideline at the 40-yard line. That's either going to be a false start or a neutral zone infraction. I believe it's going to be a false start. Yeah, that's what it's going to be, Tim. So that's going to, yeah, the Rattlers shoot themselves in the foot one more time uh, in this offensive series. So that's a five-yard penalty, Tim. So it's going to push the football back to about the 36, 37 Dead yard ball. line. False start on the white team. Five yard penalty will remain second down. Three minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the game. That's gonna back them up to make this a second and 13. We're tied at 22 apiece. LaFleur trying to gain back some momentum as Blunt has scored three un unanswered touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. It's just been incredible. It's, it's, it's been an incredible football game. 
Leatherwood stiff arms the defender and gets wrapped up back at the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard on the play, and it is going to be third down, but the clock continues to run less than three minutes remaining in our game. Yeah, and LaFleur is starting to become a little bit more predictable on offense. They already know that when Leatherwood get, gets back there in the Wildcats set, he's not going to throw the football. So they just crowd the line of scrimmage, fill up the tackle box, and they bring him down for a loss on second down, Tim. So here it is, third down and about 13 to go for LaFleur as Rodney English checks back in at the quarterback position as the play clock ticks down under 10 seconds. English out at receiver at the top of your screen. Leatherwood looking to pass, but now he's going to take it up the left side and stopped in the backfield. And that is a fourth down back at the 35-yard line for the LaFleur offense. The clock continues to tick away. Two minutes, 18 seconds and counting here in fourth quarter actions. We take a look right here. Yeah, Leatherwood was, you know, he, he took the snap from center, Tim, and he wanted to throw the football and quickly pulled it down and just tried to get to the outside and break outside containment and try to pick up so, enough for a first down. But as it goes, they're going to give this ball back to a red-hot Antonio Wright who has already returned a punt for a touchdown for 42 yards, and he's already caught what, a couple of two-point conversions in this football game. So they're going to put the ball into one of uh, Blunt's hot playmakers. Daniel Stewart back to punt this one away. Gets containment and punts it away. Takes a bounce. Going to be picked up and brought down Ooh. immediately. 33-yard <laughs> marker. One minute and 32 seconds remaining in the game. We are tied at 22. Antonio Wright is feeling invincible because you and I both know that that was a very, very dangerous, Woo. dangerous, dangerous. dangerous. Uh, ball to field uh, on a second bounce. But uh, he was able to feel it cleanly and able to uh, get the football upfield for a minimal gain on the uh, punt return, Tim. So now the ball is at the 24-yard line of LaFleur. 132 left in this uh, football game. And I'm not sure how many timeouts Blunt has. Blunt comes out in the pistol formation. Tony with a delayed handoff to Demetrius Vaughn. Going to try the right side. Gets up the field and a huge gain of about seven or eight yards on the play. Is going to cross the 40-yard line. He stayed in bounds. The clock is going to continue to tick away. One minute, 20 seconds remaining in the game. The coaches are pushing them to hurry up and get to the line. Tony drops back to pass, looks over to the left side, fires across the middle, gets the connection with his receiver. Stiff arms one defender and tackled and pushed forward. Inside the 40-yard line as his teammates come over and pick him up. Blunt has one timeout remaining, but that stops the clock with that completion momentarily while they shift the chains down to the other side of the field. One minute remaining in our game. Blunt has scored three unanswered touchdowns here in the fourth quarter, Tony and Vaughn in the backfield, shotgun formation, two receivers to each side. Tony looking to the right side, throws a strike across the middle, another completion on the play, and another first down. That catch and pitch, that pitch and catch is courtesy of Tony to Williams. Now, Blunt only has one timeout, so they're trying to preserve it. Hopefully, if they can get closer to the uh, to the end zone, Tim, we're down under a minute now. Clock stop while the chains move, first down Blunt. 53 seconds remaining, the clock starts back. Tony and Vaughn in the pistol formation, a delayed handoff. Vaughn's gonna dance around a couple of defenders, but brought down, and that might be time for the timeout. Yeah, they're gonna take their final timeout right here. Uh, they've been doing such a great job of getting the ball downfield through the air, Tim. I was really surprised they tried to run a, uh, a, a uh, delayed handoff there, a bit of a sprint draw, if you uh, if you will, but uh, it goes for naught. So, Blunt is going to spin that last time out, Tim. Now, 37 seconds remaining in this football game. It's second down and about, I think Vaughn lost a yard, Tim. So it's second down about 11. At this point, time is more important than picking up a first down. Don't get me wrong, picking up a first down is important, but you got to save time. So there is enough time to possibly – well, you know what, I take it back. It's really not a whole lot of time to run the football, Tim. I know Vaughn is your best player. So if you want to get the ball into your hands of your best player, Vaughn, you need to get him out on some type of a screen play where he can get into the secondary and create. 
So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what type of play call Mark Kirk comes up with on offense. I think they're going to come out throwing. Well, he's already got two touchdowns to his name just in this quarter, a 31-yard touchdown run and a 20-yard touchdown run for Demetrius Vaughn, getting his team back into this game. We're tied at 22 apiece, 37 seconds remaining in the game. Coming out of the timeout, fresh set of downs. So, excuse me, second and 11 for Blunt. Tony drops back to pass, has pressure in his face, lobs it up for his target, in coverage in the end zone. No flags on the play, and they will call an incompletion. Charles <laughs> Shepard had two defenders all over him as we take a look at the replay. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to comment because it's, it's not my place to uh, say, you know, whether something was, whether a call should have been made or not, but um, I'll just let the fans at home and the people in the stadium uh, moan and groan over that one. But as it goes, the official said that it was an incomplete, pla incomplete pass, but I believe there was a penalty flag, Tim, that was dropped on that play, and it's going to go against the LaFleur Rattlers. I believe it's going to be a personal foul penalty, which is huge. Here's the call from uh, Tim. That is a huge, that is a huge penalty against LaFleur. Again, who have continued, continued Tim here in this fourth quarter to implode uh, on defense. 32 seconds remaining in the game. After that penalty is be a fresh set of downs at the 14 yard line. Tony shifts Vaughn over to the left side and it looks like we might have had a jump in the trenches. Now I saw a LaFleur coach running down the sideline and shortly after I saw a flag come out. So it's gonna be a false start against the Blunt Leopards. That's a five yard penalty. So that pushes the ball from the 12 back to the 17 yard line of the Blunt Leopards. Now remember folks, this game is tied. So LaFleur, the Blunt is basically trying to win the ball game. So if they don't get the ball into the end zone, we go into overtime. First and 15 after that penalty. Vaughn shifts over to the left. Tony has targets on either side. Drops back to pass, looking to the right. Has pressure in his face. Tries to throw it out under, throws his intended target on the play, and that'll bring up second and 15 as the clock stops with 25 seconds remaining in the game. Yeah, no flags on that play, so that play will stand as run. We're still tied at 22. Man, everybody in their, in their in this stadium is holding their breath on every single play as we take a look here. Ball shawl falls grossly uh, short of the wide receiver who was in the end zone as uh, Blunt comes out now. Clock stops, they decide to huddle, which I think is a very, very good thing to do. Make sure everybody's on the right page on this second down play call. The floor has been rattled in this fourth quarter. Yes, they have been. Giving they up three unanswered touchdowns. Yeah. Blunt comes out in the I formation. Shepard shifting over towards the slot. Tony drops back to pass. Lobs it up there for Shepard in the end zone, and it'll be intercepted. No, it's, oh gosh, are you sitting? He didn't come down with it. He didn't come down with it. Yeah, that was uh, Quintrell Bryce yeah, he trying was to make a play for his secondary. Tony lobs it up there. He had Shepard. Bryce comes across the middle and thought he had it and dropped it on the play. And Tim, how many times have I asked you, what is a defensive back? He's a wide receiver that, that can tackle. That he <laughs> <laughs> He's a wide receiver that just could not catch. And that time, that was that was a tailor-made interception full of floor. Will it come back to haunt them? Will it come back to haunt them? Third down now for the Blunt Leopards. They still have two shots left at this, Tim, before we uh before we end this football game. Play clock down to two, one. Just, just get it off. Tony. Looking over the middle, throws a strike over the head of everyone. An incompletion on the play is going to bring up a fourth down and 15 with 15 seconds remaining in the game. Blunt is bringing in the special teams unit, I believe. I think, Tim, I, I actually think they're going to try a long field goal attempt. The ball currently sits on the 15, I'm sorry, the 17 yard line. So it will be a 34 yard field goal attempt from here if they attempt it. Now, 
B. Leary, they, hey, they may try a fake here. They've been relying on the legs of Demetrius Vaughn, and now they'll rely on the foot. Late here in the game, the snap is down, the kick is up. And through the uprights, Demetrius Vaughn. A 34-yard field goal gets the Leopards a lead as they have scored 25 unanswered points in the fourth quarter to come all the way back down 22 to nothing with nine seconds remaining in the game. Incredible for the senior running back. Huh? What? Demetrius Vaughn, the place kicker? We thought that Demetrius Vaughn was going to come in and dominate this football tonight on the strength of his running ability. As we look here, he drove the heck out of it, Tim. That thing would have been good from about 40, the way he kicked it. Went through the uprights. It's good. Our new adjusted score here at Blunt High School, 25 to 22. Just an amazing football game here on homecoming for the Blunt Leopards. You think the seniors will remember this homecoming? I think so. I, 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 there's a very good chance they will. There's a good chance that you and I were, will remember this homecoming, and we didn't even go to either one of these schools. It's an incredible game. Wow. Demetrius Vaughn has completely taken over here in fourth quarter action. Two rushing touchdowns and the potential game-winning 34-yard field goal. I don't know what LaFleur has set up with 9.7 seconds remaining in this football game, but it's not over yet. It is not over yet. Not until that clock reaches, triple zero is not over. Vaughn is going to come out and kick this one straight down the middle. Going to be brought up by LaFleur. Runs through a couple of defenders, stays in bounds, and the defenders drag him out of bounds. Two minutes, 2.3 seconds, excuse me, remaining in the game. A penalty flag comes out at the 35-yard line. Yeah, and that's going to be a personal foul penalty against Blunt. So that's going to tack another 15 yards because there was a, a little too much extracurricular activity over here on the Blunt sideline where the LaFleur player was forced out of bounds. So it's going to be a personal foul penalty against Blunt. Now that's going to push the football up near midfield. So Anthony Schamberger should already start thinking about what am I going to do with this football considering that I'm, I, I've got to go about, what, 50 yards to get this thing into the end zone. But we're going to get the call here from Tim Portis, but I believe it's going to be a personal foul penalty. Well, I take it back, it's unsportsmanlike conduct against LaFleur. Wow. That one surprised me. That one surprised me. I was sure that one was against Blunt, but wow. That, uh, that penalty may, may salt this game away now for the Blunt Leopards. Just an amazing comeback by the Leopards. The coach is trying to get enough players off the field. We're going to be looking at an old-fashioned Hail Mary and prevent defense. <laughs> at the end of this game, an incredible comeback by the Blunt Leopards. 25 unanswered points. Unsportsmanlike. Half this penalty. First down. Rodney English, let's see how far he can throw it. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be a hook and ladder type of situation, or maybe they'll just continue to throw the ball backwards until somebody can get it and find a rushing lane and try to get upfield and make something happen. But uh, Leatherwood and Stewart out to the left side. English rolls to his right. He's just going to take it himself, gets out of bounds, and that's the ball game. The Blunt Leopards with 25 unanswered points in the fourth quarter come all the way back to defeat the LaFleur Rattlers on homecoming 25 to 22. Yeah, just an amazing job. Give all the credit in the world to coach Mark Hurt because he did he 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 made sure that his guy his guys did not quit when they went into that halftime locker room. I don't know what he said to these guys, but they came out and they played inspired football in the second half to come all the way from behind to defeat LaFleur, one of their big rivals here on homecoming night by a score of 25 to 22. Outstanding. We'll be back with post-game coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. Blunt defeating LaFleur 25 to 22. 
It started for me when I went into the first grade and then I went on to George Hall Elementary School and from there to Williamson where I graduated. The public school system, it had a great impact on me because not only did it prepare me academically for my future career, but it also prepared me for life. Because of its diversity of, of students and teachers, it really gave me a well-rounded education. Welcome into post-game coverage of the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. An incredible comeback by the Blunt Leopards here in the fourth quarter. 25 unanswered points, Howard McCain. 25 after being down 22 to nothing for three quarters. 22 to nothing. That must have been one heck of a fourth quarter speech that Mark Hurt gave his team. And don't you kind of wish you could have been in the locker room to hear exactly what we gotta he said to his team? We got to mic him up. We got to mic him up. I know, right, because... I'm pretty sure there are like uh, supervisors all over the country that would love to hear what Mark Hurst said to his team to rally themselves in the second half and come out and win this football game by a score of 25 to 20, 22. I'm still impressed with the fact that Demetrius Vaughn booted a 34-yard field goal to win the football game when you and I thought he would win this thing on the strength of his legs. Don't get me wrong, he did score a rushing touchdown tonight. But Two of them. I didn't think that he was going to win this football game on the strength of his leg kicking the football. That was incredible. It's been an incredible night of incredible plays. Yes. Both teams. Yes. You got to give it up to LaFleur. They came out strong, but – a tale of two halves as the Rattlers were unable to do anything in the second half. Demetrius Vaughn, two rushing touchdowns in the fourth quarter and the game-winning field goal, an incredible night for one senior. Yeah, and, and, and you got to tip your hat again, like you said, to LaFleur. D'Angelo Stewart played at a phenomenal football game for the LaFleur Rattlers. But in these games, these rivalry games, Tim, I don't care how well people play, somebody's got to win. Tim, somebody's got to lose. And tonight it was the LaFleur Rattlers, but you have to tip your hat to Blunt and Coach Mark and Coach uh, Mark Hurt. Well, the Blunt Leopards will take on the Sarah Land Spartans next Thursday live here on Seymour TV as they continue to put pressure as the number four seed in 6A Region 1. For Mobile County Public Schools, Quentin Howard, Howard McCain, I'm Tim Finnegan. Thank you for joining us for the Mobile County Public Schools High School Football Game of the Week. Tune in every Friday and Thursday for all the best high school football action in the Mobile area.